because Tana also said boy. Oh, Everyone's singing yeah. boy. And there's been a boy balloon behind me this whole time. Oh, but there's is a that girl. Easter egg? <laughs> <laughs> there's the Easter egg. Welcome back to the most anticipated comeback <laughs> podcast. Everybody was wondering, where is the Jess Trish podcast? We took a break, okay? We took a deserved, needed break. <sighs> and it was good, and we are back better than ever because we have a full show for you guys today. There's so much gossip to catch up on. There is so much because we, yes. we've been pretty good about like not talking about all the little stories and stuff yes. that have come out. Sometimes we can't wait, but this whole break, I'm like, no, everything that came up, I'm like, I have to save it for the podcast. Same. <laughs> we have so much. But before we get into all of it, you guys, happy new year. And also, oh, well, welcome Oscar, by the way. I feel like I always should give you an intro and just, there's no intro. Kansas City Chiefs fan. I didn't know you're such an NFL fan over here. Love football. Apparently they're not <laughs> having a good year this year um, and they're not going to make the Super Bowl. I think that's fine with me. I'd rather them not make the Super Bowl. Yeah. I, I don't think I'd be able to handle that. They got to get engaged. They got to travel the world. Yeah, I know Travis Kelsey. I know so much about sports. He didn't, he was benched <laughs> yesterday Oh, at the game. I forget why, wow. but <laughs> you need to get I think that. he just like, I don't know if he sucked or if he's injured. Oh. I hope, I think he just sucked. I think. Really? I heard, yeah. I think but that some... always happens. It's like Lamar Odom. He was never a good basketball player. You know what I mean? But he was the most famous. I so. think Travis Kelsey is usually good. I think he's oh, just in he? a little bit of a slump right now, which is fine. He's in love. Yeah. Like, who cares? It's like Vanessa Hudgens, <laughs> baseball guy too. My dad's big into sports and he like didn't know who that guy was, Cole, whatever. And I was just like, do you know this guy's like, no. no. And usually he doesn't know. He knew Tristan Thompson because he was in Cleveland, but he even said he wasn't that good on Cleveland. So I think it's like these famous guys. Who's the other one? Chris Humphreys. My dad oh, didn't know him yeah. either. And my dad's like a big sports fan, so I feel like he knows and I don't know. Anyways. Now I don't feel like a Taylor Merch is a little too obvious, and now I'm like, Achieves is a little more discreet. That is, discreet Swifty. Oh, so. totally. Yeah. yeah, you have to go with the adjacent with what yeah. they know. I, think that's, I do think that's very cool. Um, I love it. It's very cool. Moses, hi. Happy New Year, babe. Happy New Year. We spent the past two and a half weeks like, together. How was it? Pretty good. It's nice to be. Uh, we hosted a lot of family, so that was nice. We really had fun. multiple Christmases, multiple Christmas Eves, <laughs> multiple Thanksgivings, multiple New Year's. Oh, gender reveal. We've done this is our third gender really? reveal today. Yes, this is our third gender reveal. We did one for the family. We did one oh for a little TikTok with the heart cake. And now we're doing one for you, Austin. Oh my God. I'm so honored. <laughs> Just for you. So we're doing a gender reveal later. We've been together two and a half weeks. I had a few breakdowns over the course of the holidays. I just started crying. I don't know if it's a hopefully it's the pregnancy hormones. We were at Masters for our annual monthly or our monthly date night, and I just started bawling and I'm sure our waiter was like what is happening? Why thought we were getting broken up with because there's just tears and I could see him come back and like just like move again way again. He's like I'm not coming back yet. It was very odd and I wasn't like I wasn't even sad or upset. I don't know. I just started like crying. It was very weird. The food know. moved you to tears? Maybe. Maybe that was it. <laughs> maybe it was the food. Mastros. I do love Mastro's and it's so frustrating when I can't. I've been getting nauseous at night and I can't eat at night and we made bolognese twice and we didn't even film it for Patreon. Last night I meant to. I got the recipe to film for Patreon and then I came down and you were already cooking which is so sweet because the food was already ready from shower, but I we meant to do the Patreon with it. Well, I'm sure we're gonna cook it once again this it week. It was oh, that is my oh really? Oh, That's my favorite. Eve yeah. cooked it. He cooked it for my family. And speaking of patrons, shout out Patreon. Oh my God, Patreon.com/slash Jess Trish. Wild. Thank you guys so much. Here we are. Can you see this? Is this in the shot? This is our headshot of the month. It's our Christmas <laughs> special. Next month's headshot is this outfit. We did a little headshot photo shoot earlier, but this is the headshot. We're gonna have silver marker this month. Very exciting. <laughs> the headshot tier and the producer tiers will get this. I'm also putting together a binder of all the headshot signed headshots and maybe we'll, I don't know, give one away at the end of the year or something. But um, you only get the headshot of the month. You can't go back and get the first one. So uh, get the headshot of the month today at patreon.com slash just Trish. We have a headshot tier. We have, uh, with the headshot tier, woo, with our headshot tier and our producer tier, you guys get Trish Moji stickers. Have you seen so these? so cute. Did you see them? I haven't seen them in person just so when he posted them. They're kind of They're everything. So cute. There's one, a different one each month for this whole year. Um, so we're starting off with, I don't know what you would call this, I guess the military Trish. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This is the meme. Oh, it's MCR. MCR in the military. No! Me as, yes. <laughs> <I was> gonna, <laughs> no! 
I acted. I was giving. I was. I don't know where the Golden Globes didn't give it to me. I was gonna say you would get my Golden Globe for oh sure. Oh my gosh! Thank mm-hmm. you. We should do an award show. We should. Uh, <laughs> Well, the Trishy Awards or something. Also, you have to sign up by the 10th. This comes out the 9th, so you have a day to sign up. You have to sign up by the 10th to get that month's headshot. If you sign up after the 10th, you'll get the next month's headshot. We send them out on the 15th. I know you guys like getting mail from us. It's very exciting. I got mail from the weekend, and I felt like we're best friends. So I hope you feel like you're my best friend. We got pink envelopes. We got gold stars for the producer tier. Um, and then the producer tier, you guys get our happy holiday card. Did you see this? So cute. I got one for you. I got some over there oh for you. God. A little holiday card from the Jess Trish. I even wrote, why do you even do this for our family Christmas? cards a little wrote a little oh summary God, of our year beautiful. so this is cute they get a little happy holiday card this is for the producer tier i'm trying to get like special bonuses for the producers each month we also have producer questions coming today and oh also you get uh you get a cute card in the mail which people really like these cute cards they were framing <laughs> these too this is for the producer tier producer tiers i also posted videos for you guys you also get you know what while we're talking about it let me just give a shout out to the producers real quick while we're here okay producers we have dylan p luke w bailey michaela and Zane, Cloud, Nikki, Kelly, Sierra, McNabb, Erica, Michael, S, L, Bloom, AMF, Angelica Sandoval, maybe related to Tom Sandoval, Victoria <laughs> DeRose, James J, Layla M, Patricia D, Ellie May, Linda Rem, Cynthia Ann, Morgan S, Elsa Victoria, Brittany S, Bella C, Monique R, Alexa, Michael P, Melly, America, It's Your Girl, Hamin the Pilot, Michelle Lee, Clink Boots the House Down, <laughs> Break Room Banter Podcast, Matthew C, Happy Birthday, Miranda. I didn't even think about it when I wrote it, but it was kind of funny. Raya B, Anastasia P, James Lee Clark, Manuel B, Olivia, Elruz, Emmy, Kaylee, Morals, Lauren, Kian, Kane, Lim, Danny Marie, Abdullah A, and Abdullah. We love the two Abdullahs. I love that you guys have been here since day one. Jessica R, Quincy, Amelia, Elizabeth W, Megan Lim, Haim, Aiden K, Jacqueline S, Ness, Jess, Aleph A, Derek, Elizabeth P, and Brianna M. Thank you to our producers. Oh, I, so I, many need now. I, guess I, I know. I don't need it. I guess we, we always put you at the credits at the end. That is a lot, actually. Oh my God. We've grown so much. We have crazy. questions from the producers. We have inputs from the producers. So thank you guys. Um, it means a lot in our headshot tier. And everybody, honestly. Honestly, the slate too of the $5, $10 tiers. People just want to see extra content. We love to do it. We love to see it. Do we have Patreon videos for today? We have a whole cake to eat. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little cake muffin. Cake muffin. We can do that. Yeah, for sure. Wait, but can, are you eating cake now? Because you said you're done, which by the way, I was going to tell you, you look great. You look like you lost weight, <laughs> but are you just down six pounds? Yeah, I've it's lost amazing. six pounds this past month. But like, I'm trying to approach fitness this year in a more like healthy, less like critical way, I think. Mm, I think you kind of talked about that too, mm. just like not being so critical when you talk about your body. And that's kind of how I'm going at it too. I'm just trying to, you know, make better decisions, like kind of be more consistent working out and not be so like hard on myself so that's so important that's my that's my one new year's resolution is on this podcast or anywhere and i just noticed it a lot i do say it a lot about myself i call myself fat or i talk about it with guests or with you or i'm like that's so i feel off-putting unattractive and like nobody wants to hear about it you know what i mean (laughs) because let's say they're let's say like for me when i hear like a person littler than me i'm like oh my god they must think i'm a cow you know when people are like oh i'm such a pig i'm like what do you think about me then you know what i mean so one two even if you're not if you're just like a normal weight person don't think about food it's just annoying to hear people complain it's like okay lose weight or just stop complaining. You know what I mean? Like just, I don't know, just hearing someone always call themselves fat and talk down about this. I'm like, you know what? I don't ever have a problem with myself. I always say it to get it like ahead of the comments. Cause you know, I always hear like, oh, she's so huge and stuff like that. So I'm like, I'm just gonna call myself fat. But in reality, like I really don't care right now. But I know, you, like I'm like you, where I'm like, yes, I'll make better choices in my head. But I don't need to, like announce it all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like it's kind of like a defensive yes. thing when you grow up bigger. Like you kind of just like make the joke about it first before anyone else mm-hmm. can to you. But I'm kind of just like, let's just leave it. Like it's kind of out. That's my out for 2024. It's very out. Yeah, like just kind of do the work. You know, make better choices. Be a little bit more health conscious, but I don't agree. obsess and don't be so hard on yourself. And don't talk you know? badly about yourself yeah. because I feel like that just like it just makes you feel worse because I wasn't even feeling bad about myself until we like started this podcast and people being like she looks huge and all that stuff like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, and then you know because you are seeing full body Trish and I was like, oh my god, I do look huge or whatever. And then I'm like, but in real life, I don't think about it. I'm like, I think I always look good or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't know, especially being pregnant. I'm like, God, I'm so 
still like being like, oh my God, I'm so fat or whatever. It's just like, well, whatever. It's just what it is. So yeah. This new era for us is so, we're I so know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh my God, we're so positive and sweet. Yes. And that was my <laughs> other resolution. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to be like, my resolution has always been to be a little nicer. And I feel like people have seen it. And it's true because it's like, sometimes I would like to just be a little catty, a little mean. And I'm just like, it doesn't ever feel good. You know what yeah. I mean? I like to give the benefit of the doubt everywhere for the most part. So I'm just like, let me just be kinder. And I feel like that works. Even in like gossiping and like personal life, I'm like, I don't need to gossip so much. You know what I mean? Mm. A little gossip's cute, but <laughs> <laughs> anyways, it's a good, it's a good mix. I did see, I think it was Chris Clemens said something on his podcast where he's like, he's, t- he wants to be more, uh, what was it? Like more out opinionated, more. He's like, I've been so scared to get canceled and now I just want to speak my mind more. And I get like that sometimes too. I'm like, maybe I should go back to like old Trish. <laughs> Sometimes I think that. Sometimes I'm like, but then I'm like, it doesn't feel like good sometimes. I think there's a balance. There's definitely a balance. And I think with us too, it's been a little tricky navigating because sometimes, you know, we're constantly learning and unlearning as I like (laughs) to put it. And, uh, but I think there's stuff that we're really passionate about and like we really have solid opinions on. And I feel like that's when we can really like get in. in, Yeah. yeah. But there's stuff where we're kind of like discovering you know, different facts, different sides of the story, and then things kind of shift as we go along, you know? Oh, so, definitely. Yeah. I when you hear more to it. two categories when it comes to, like, developing opinions and sharing them with people. But, yes. Mm-hmm. I think our Patreon has helped, not to plug Patreon again, but our Patreon has helped because we do talk about more things that get a little more, like, we're more, like, passionate about like a more um reactive reactive yeah Yeah, like honest true feelings and like we talk them out over there and then people will like send us stuff like be like oh but they said like here's a list of things too we're like oh man now we can form an opinion and be (laughs) like this person's awful and they're a piece of crap or whatever like that because you know at the end of the day there are just some crappy people out there yeah that's the tea that don't like learn that just continue to be crappy yeah and manipulative and it's like okay i feel like those people you can call out a little bit totally and i feel like i'm always very naive and i with people i usually like give them the benefit of the doubt but then there's some where it's just like Girl, I see exactly who you are, yes. and you're not going to get one past me. Yeah. yeah. Right. I feel that way, too. And I feel like I'm especially someone who's like, you know what, give people second, third, fourth chances. You know, it's not it's all, always what they see. But then it's like when it's so clearly obvious and they're still like awful people, you're like, okay, call them out. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it'll get through eventually. You know, I feel like when I've had my era of just being problematic, it took a while for me to get through to be like, oh, maybe this is like problematic. But I wasn't like awful. There's some like really icky people out there. And I feel like I was never like an ick person who purposely tried to be awful. Yeah. But there's some people that I'm like like really scared for i'm like oh my god they're an actual psycho there's some people who just suck some people who just suck some people just suck okay well (laughs) that's fine (laughs) if you're in that category but if we can give benefits of the doubt yeah 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 love that for us 2024 i'm like this season two season two i don't know know. they told me who was it i was just asking i think i asked the canceled girls because they're like their season two is coming to an end i'm like what does that mean like when do you start a new season and they're like oh when your contract's up i was like oh Oh, don't know we have no contracts here we could just make it up we're continuous yeah Yeah. we're season two i almost was gonna have you edit over the break and then i was like oh that's too much like a little like teaser clip of like coming back like hey here comes season two 2024 because i seen wendy williams do that. I was like, that'd be so cute, but I don't know. It seemed like a lot. <laughs> and her little teasers are always her behind a photo shoot. She's like, oh, that is funny. So I thought that would be a really cute idea, but maybe maybe season three we'll yeah, have yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have more moments to show. Oh man. But I'm excited 2024 is an eight year, which is like my lucky number. Eight, it's abundance, so it's an abundance for everyone. And that's infinite. We're also on filming this January 8th, which is Elvis Presley's birthday. So I think it's just like the eights are lining up. Last time I said, Moses can attest to this. Last time I said on the last episode of the Hot Topics, I said something about like unexpected money showing up literally that day a huge amount of money showed up and I had no idea like I wasn't expecting it to come from this place like I didn't even know this thing was being monetized and literally just like set what how many figures is that five figures five mm-hmm. figures I was like I sent it to Moses I screenshotted it It was like literally that Monday night I screenshotted it he's like you were just talking about on the podcast unexpected money I was like oh my god you're right because it does happen sometimes it doesn't happen that quickly but like unexpected money will show up but literally that night it did so I'm like let me just talk about unexpected money again because that was <laughs> wild that was so wild so that was the day i was like writing christmas bonuses i'm like extra for everybody i was like so excited um so we're gonna do the gender reveal but maybe before that we can get into some golden globes and then we can get into yeah, hot well, topics i have okay. to give you your private oh, oh my God. thank you babe <laughs> oh my God, okay so is there a preface story before we started the podcast i had an idea of like what i wanted to get oh but it's been a long it's a custom thing so it's, it took a while oh. to get in the works um, and I found this artist on Instagram who did it. His name is Carl. They call me obsessed. Um, that's his name? Yeah, that's that. his Instagram handle. I don't know. I'm excited for you to see it. Okay. Okay. They call me obsessed. <laughs> I, I love gifts of any type. I never expect them, but I always love them. I oh have my to get God. a little oh. creative. Oh, yeah, it's a little oh. fragile. So. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm kind of gagged right now. 
Oh my. It's just Trish Barbie. <gasps> <laughs> this looks so good. Are you kidding me? Based off your episode one look. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm so confused. Did he make the actual Barbie? Because she's got like thick calves and I love it. He took a Barbie and he customized it. He repainted and redid the hair and he made that custom little dress. He actually did Sugar and Spices doll when they had a doll on Drag Race. No. Yeah. Uh, so I knew he was the the right one to I, was, I customize really thought it. of Sugar and Spice. They're coming this week and I literally was just like, they're going to gag for this doll. The hair, the makeup. It's so cute. Oh it's so you. God. It's so Trish Core. Thank you. <laughs> so, are we Trish Core now? Not Trish Coded? <laughs> Or Trish Cord is like referencing. Yes. Okay, so Trish like Cord. aesthetic. Yeah, Trish Cord aesthetic. Wait, I gotta put this on his little stand. Oh my gosh, this would be so cute. The hair is Isn't like. Isn't it a sleigh? Oh my yeah. God. Thank you. You're this welcome. Is amazing. <laughs> I think it had one custom bobblehead done for me and it didn't look like me at all, but I didn't mind it. I still like this is cool, but this like looks like me. The makeup is like, it's really giving. Oh my <laughs> God, she's beautiful. I can't stop staring. Oh my God. <laughs> Someone call Mattel. We need a Trish Barbie right now. <laughs> I mean, this is great. I wish we could sell these. These I are know. so I cool. We could have a little line. Oh my god, the hair is iconic. Thank you. You're so welcome. Much. Oh my god, I was not expecting this. <laughs> oh my god, isn't that crazy? Oh my it's god, perfect. that's so cool. Want to get like a little custom tea mic? That's the next. Oh bit. my god, <laughs> that's so funny. Just holding the mic. This is so cool. I love it so much. I think we sold this dress on Poshmark. We should have kept it that first dress. <laughs> no. This is so cute. I love her. She's so curvy. <laughs> have you watched the new Drag Race? Yes, I have. I haven't watched it yet. We meant to watch it because I was like, what can you talk about on the show? Do you like it? Is it good? They split the premiere into two. Um, oh. So it's like half the queens were episode one, then another half are episode two. So I think it'll be good for you to watch both in one sitting because I felt like I loved all the queens. It was like everyone was really great, but I just like, I miss when they're all together at once. Like I want to see all 14 of them yeah, together. Yeah, that's kind of weird. They would split. It's like the Hunger Games playing the final movie. Yeah. It's like, don't do <laughs> yes, that. We exactly. want to see it all together. Just give it us, yeah, give them all to us at once, you know. It's giving um like greedy, like we're trying to like. Really drag it out. Yeah. That's like if we did this podcast in like three episodes, like three parts, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Just like give it all at once. I think MTV, like they order a specific amount of episodes and then it's up to like the production to figure out how they're going to fulfill that many episodes, you know? So, oh. and I think as the show gets bigger and bigger, <laughs> Bigger, the episodes keep going up and up. <laughs> so they're like, wait, what do you mean up and up? Like, like the number of episodes per season. So they're like, we're not no. gonna, we're gonna split the premiere. We're not gonna eliminate anyone. Like they really try to drag it out. Like no, pun intended. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you remember we watched and there was like an episode that nobody get, like nothing happened. Yes, we're like, wait, why did this episode happen? Oh yeah, I guess yeah. yeah they just are like, we're gonna just give you something. Yeah, we're gonna give you nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like, it's like everyone's here. I want to get into it because we haven't. We only watched that one season, and I want to get into it now. I feel like we're gonna become a drag podcast. That's my I'm goal. Excited. Yeah, like have a month of just drag because I feel like I feel like we have some guests ready to come so I feel yeah. like and I'm kind of getting into my drag queen era <laughs> I love it although you got yourself in beef with one of them <laughs> oh I saw it you saw it what? I saw it the no theater. you told me <laughs> the Luca <laughs> no you saw it oh why did you tell me do you think it would trigger me I thought you saw it you, I, no. whenever I tell her have you seen something she saw it already I know no. you, you're always ahead of me on oh, Twitter gee. oh my god I kind of live for it I was also get beef I was with like yeah do you want to I've I didn't know how you'll take it. You think, oh, was it was something that triggered me? Was she like, was she angry? Yes. Yeah. Which <gasps> is kind of funny because oh, it's no. like. <laughs> but that's how. I thought we were like reading each other. Like I thought that's what drag queens do. But I think that's what happened on the show. Everyone thought so. But then yeah, she always gets so serious. And oh, so no. like. Oh, no. Okay. I no, can handle it now. I think, okay. She can't take any. Oh, my. Wait, really? I feel like it wasn't that bad, was no, it? No, I didn't think you okay, were thank either. You. Like, I was the, like the response. Your response okay, was me. very much like the viewer. Every viewer a majority of viewers had the same reaction to Lisa the Duke I guess because she was edited like the villain you know she didn't get like a favorable edit like some got like the hero edit or like the like right Sugar and Spice got kind of like the underdog or annoying yeah you know so everyone kind of got their own you know (laughs) vibe and oh no so it was so funny that like maybe just like having to relive that like reaction a year later maybe trigger Lucy but it was funny because (laughs) She also did did like an interview with like a gay times, like pride, one of those magazines or whatever. And they, I think it was just to ask about like, Oh, you got into a, a feud with Trisha Paytas. Wait, was that recent? <laughs> Wait, what? How did I not? Because you should all see from like their fandom being like, how dare you? I mean, I guess I just wasn't on. I was in my own little mental yeah. breakdown during this. <laughs> I guess I was crying every week. So it's fun. Wait, so what? Tell me the uh, tea. What did, he, what did she say? Um, Just. What's well, the meanest part? Did they, how did she 
Did she throw jabs? Yeah, on Twitter, the initial reaction on Twitter, it came like a week or two after the episode even aired, which is funny. On Twitter, she got a little feisty. But then in the interview, it's just like... Tell me, you won't hurt my feelings. Oh, a white girl who cosplays and uses clickbait trying to drag me over a show that happened a year ago. Wait, um, why the white girl? Isn't she white? <laughs> yeah. I'm so confused. I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't Wait, that... white girl that cosplays what? A white girl who cosplays who like clickbaits like the trans community or something, something. Oh something. my god, oh, she was she did the deep cut. Whoa. Yeah, it was wild. But then I had the trans flag on today, so <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I can't be transphobic. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the oh my in the God. interview though the interview was kind of weird because the interview was like Lucy was like more like laughing it off. It was, Lucy was a little bit jokey about okay. it. Maybe she Lucy she ended down up a minute. yeah she she was a little tightly wound when she first saw it, but then she loosened up towards oh, that. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Um, and then she all of a sudden she just responded by quoting New York's monologue about Gemma Collins. Like she literally just said okay. That whole, and a lot of people were like, well, why can't maybe come up with like a unique read yeah but. i mean okay well i'm not getting more beef but what, um, what, what oh the she thinks she's a beautiful girl she's yeah, not someone lied to her yeah as we were just saying i'm not self-deprecating i think the first person to call myself ugly and fat but thank you lucy deluca for bringing that up so my gosh to me it was pretty unserious i think maybe lucy took, took it very seriously oh my but God, i'm like, so girl, sorry relax. It was really, i'm in it my was... apology era right now <laughs> that's wild because i think of drag queen just like being so mean to each other like <laughs> but cute like they all think it's cute right like mistress everyone clowned her little kitten heels i'm a kitten heel girl but you know what i mean like, i feel like i thought that's just like what people do maybe i'm not welcome in the drag no. world no because everyone else like lux tweeted like the clip of us talking about her like everyone else was really I excited lux. i want so. lux like my, i haven't because i was like we're trying to coordinate time but i want to get the outfit lux wore the rupaul outfit the tina turner outfit oh, you know the orange yeah. but i want to get it in pink so i'm like i literally like go I've, I've been trying to find all the places that made all these like customs for all the drag queens so i've been trying to find like the right thing to do but um yikes <laughs> i can't believe you didn't tell me where'd you see it are you on gay Twitter? I saw it on Twitter. No, I think it was He's on drag, Twitter. drag <laughs> Twitter. Yeah. Oh my but, God. But it, I mean, we were fair because we weren't talking about her. We were just talking about how the edit was bad. Yeah. You know, we understand that it's not real. Well, also just that she does basic drag queen stuff, which is not bad. I'm basic. <laughs> I just have to say, I ate some Wonder Bread. Basic's Wonder. <laughs> and it's also white. I don't get the white girl thing. Uh, I know. That's oh funny. my God. That's crazy. Well, I haven't done my 23 in me yet. So let's just <laughs> wait on those remarks. Oh man. I'm so sorry. I'm pregnant. <laughs> just. Oh my God. But then it's like sometimes I'm like, I don't know. Sorry, not sorry. I don't know. You can have opinions, right? I feel like people yeah, can especially say. Especially when you put yourself on a talent competition on reality TV, you kind of set yourself up for opinions. I get it. Because, like, you know, if you talk about someone, they have a right to talk about you right back. But I think it was just taken a little a little too oh seriously. My God. I'm like, my God. The trans comments a lot. I feel like I'm a trans ally. Yeah, it, yeah, and just like very like dated and like, kind of like out of pocket. I was like, oh. my God, nothing well, you said was like personal. So I'm like, <laughs> she, I mean, <laughs> but I get the yeah. same way. I can be really. That's why I've like I've been so good lately. Is like I'm so reactive when people like say stuff yeah. about me, and I think at that moment you need to just take a minute. You know what I mean? Because it's like. <laughs> Not that serious at that, especially me. So unserious. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't know we're starting the year off with beef. I thought it was like really. Well, this was the end. Of, this is technically twenty twenty three. So okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I apologize, Lucy to Luca. <laughs> it's okay to be basic. It's okay to be white. I think I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm so sorry for anything else. I guess I'm not a good reader, but... Uh, yeah, you're not a good reader because you not, instantly apologize. I, like, I, okay. I'm so sorry. I doubled I'm down. Again. I'm so sorry again. <laughs> Did you see Trixie uh, Mattel said she saw Jake Shane octopusy, you know... Did you see that? No, what did she say? She said she saw him at like the Netflix office building or something. I don't I I'm assuming she was out of drag. And she said she went up to Jake and was like, Oh, I love you on TikTok or whatever, like that. And he's like, Thanks. He's like, Who are you? Like, oh. did it know? And she's like, There's a gay guy on the internet that doesn't know who I am. And I'm like, that's kind of true though, because like every, you know Trixie Mattel. Like everyone knows Trixie Mattel, even if you're not like a drag, especially if you're gay. I mean, is that, I don't know if that's a stereotype, but you mean should know so. Trixie like, Mattel. Trixie's just like a staple of the gay community. Like, I guess maybe out of drag. Is Trixie out of drag? I will say. Trixie out of drag kind of looks like and like could be anybody. You know what I mean? I have like, no idea what oh, she looks like out of drag. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I have no idea. Never seen No, ever. you haven't seen the, the podcast, The Bald and the Beautiful? I swear we watched clips of it, no? 
Okay. But I don't know that it's her. Oh, right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I have no idea what. Everyone was saying it was the Gypsy Rose. Did you see that one where it's like, <laughs> there was like a beanie and they're like, oh, Gypsy Rose has a podcast out of prison already. <laughs> oh, that is funny. I love Gypsy Rose on a, on a press tour right now. I love the Gypsy Rose press tour. That is You love whole... it? Because someone, oh, one of our producers, let me get the name. One of our producers was asking about this and they wanted us to talk about it. Ellie May. Ellie May was wondering about the Gypsy Rose craze and what we thought of it. You're uh, here for it. So I was, I mean, at first I will say it was very apprehensive at first, like pre her coming out of prison, just because the buildup was also like, it was a lot. And I was apprehensive because I'm like, okay, maybe she's not expecting all of this or wants any of this, you know? Yeah. Um, just because there were so already like a lot of memes, a lot of jokes, a lot of attention, um, a lot of stan culture, like getting behind her, like, yes, queen mother bows down boots, you <laughs> know? <Mouse> down. <laughs> so I was a little worried. Yeah. Because I wanted to see what Gypsy thought of it. But um, it's clear that she likes. <laughs> oh, you she know, was lining it up in prison. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I started watching her a Lifetime documentary. That, that's what the press tour has right. been for, and it's been like well, almost like two years in the making. This documentary and this press tour. So it's clear that like she, this is something that she prepared for while she was in prison, and that she maybe not to this level, obviously, but she was still kind of anticipating like some kind of like you know going around doing the interviews. Um, having people have opinions about her one way or the other, you know. So I think she did like PR training. Like I feel like she knew, like she knew the answers, the questions. Yeah. Did you see her on the View? Yeah. Did you see Joy Behar being like, "It's okay, don't be hard on yourself." <laughs> like, and it's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and she said, "No, like murder is not the answer." It's like, oh, that. <laughs> I know, oh, okay. I was like, wait, did she not? <laughs> Like the press tour is some fierce. Like she did Entertainment Tonight, which was that was. Oh a, my god! But it's all in New York. She's not here in LA, so yeah, we had our own York. PR people reach out, and um, and they said she's not coming to LA anytime soon. And I was like, oh, we man. might have to go to New York. I we we just we just got a call <laughs> to be on a TV show in New York, like a like a um, I guess it's like a daytime talk show. Oh wow! I won't say who yet, but a daytime talk show is like, do you want to come on for an interview? My initial reaction is like, they just want to like expose me or make fun of me or like confront me about something so i'm just like but they're like no just an interview you can talk about your podcast i was like really but i was like i guess a lot i see tiktokers and stuff on there so i was like so we talked about it i was like maybe next week because i know we're doing hot topics like early so i was like maybe next week we'll go and we'll go see gypsy rose but but here's the thing okay i'm all for gypsy rose i love it but now it's kind of like is it oversaturated yeah i think it's a lot at first but i think this is literally like the only time she can really do it like she just came mm. out of prison like the show was on right now right. strike so there's hot. yeah there really is no other time that she can like really go full force you know i think obviously it's like a mix of like her own and also like lifetime really pushing it too yeah um but this is the biggest time that she'll have so she might as well like go all in if this is what she wants you do know? you think i know i'm gypsy roasting i support her do you think that this will maybe motivate people who are a little off to like well, this she got famous doing this. Maybe I'll do this too. A lot of people already do that though. Like that's a big thing with people who commit these kind of cri- like those kind of serious crimes. Like because even if it's like on the bad side, right? There's people who do horrific things and then they become kind of like a figure or they become like a public figure. There's some people that want to get famous and when things don't work out in life, they're like, okay, there's always that option yeah so that's what i'm saying it's like but that's why in, in some type of crimes they stop mentioning their names the point to that too <laughs> is then people are saying do you know the menendez brothers are you familiar yeah. with them like how they're not released from prison because it was kind of the same thing where their dad was abusing them different of course but their dad was like abusing them in every single way and that was their way of getting out of it yeah i think it's super super tricky and it's, that's why i get why it's so divisive too because it's like you learn about the story and there's so many different elements to it. You know, like there's obviously like her relationship with her mother. There's like the Munchausen by proxy. There's mm-hmm. her really like twisted relationship with her boyfriend at the time who was the one that actually committed the murder. You know, there's mm-hmm. like a lot of stuff that I was reading that he did and like his record before oh, he, yeah. even, you know, became in a relationship with Gypsy at the time. So it's so complicated and it's like also so documented. Like she was getting so much public attention at the time and she was kind of like, you know, this like token of overcoming all these like obstacles mm-hmm. as a child, you know? So it's very, I think it's very different. It's a very unique case. It's like, it's also like very recent. And I think there's also like the image of like a little girl going through all this too. Oh, yeah. It makes it also like very, very different. Like you see the photos of her and like in the wheelchair and the princess dresses. And oh, like, yeah. 
I don't know. It's just so. It's devastating for sure. She has trauma, and I feel anything she does is yeah. like a, a stem of that. You know what I mean? Like the the, the boyfriend on the other hand is completely different because he has that only sadistic before all this happened. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't like he just wanted to do this, but she obviously it was like all the stuff that's happened to her. And I I I'm always on her side for that for sure. Like I'm just like yeah, like what? And she said she tried to run away, and the mom would find her, and so so it's like. We're all on Gypsy's side for sure. I just am like, oh, with all this attention and and she takes accountability like in her all her interviews. She's very much like, you know, I, this was not the way I should have gone yeah. about it. Like I should have. So it's like it's not like she's glorifying anything. Um, but then you just wonder some of these like sickos out here. Like you were saying, like the copycat thing, like the person, um, I think they saw the taxi driver movie and then they saw like Jodie Foster. So they tried to like unalive, was it Reagan or something they tried to do? So it's like they see these like movies and I don't know how many like copycats do it, but I don't know. I, I just thought like, man, she's getting, cause she is like probably like one of the most famous people like right now, like yeah. sought after interviews, money, all stuff like that. Um, I kind of love that her husband's doing the press tour with her too. I was like, okay. I know. <laughs> just getting Ryan. in there. <laughs> Ryan. I was like, and then they're just, she posted a pregnancy test. Did you see that? No. She's it's <laughs> negative. I'm oh, like, girl, shoot. you just got out of prison. I mean, I get it. Like, make up for a lost time. But um, he's doing the newlywed game with her. I'm just I like, know. yeah. It is wild. Like, yeah. 2024 is getting off to a wild it's start. It's wild. Because it's like the, like I said, just right out the gate, the press tour is, it's something fierce. And her clapping back on Instagram, like, saying that she's getting D down. <laughs> Ryan is wild. giving her the D good. I'm like, okay, sister. I know that he writes back, like, don't worry, baby. I'm not worried by that. I'm like, I <laughs> I love this so much. It's good energy. I like it. Yeah, she is kind of a vibe. Like, she's pretty sassy. She's pretty self-assured, um, which is great to see, I think. Like, it, mm-hmm. like I said, it, like, at least kind of makes me less anxious about, like, all the attention she's getting. Right. Kind of, I don't know. Like, I get, I go back and forth because, yes, like, she did a bad thing, but she, there's also, like, so many tragic circumstances around it that you kind of, like, empathize and she's a victim in so many ways, too. Granted, I think, like I said, I think right now it's just so big and it's a lot. I think it'll taper off within a couple months. For sure, and yeah. Kind of normalize, you know. It's like George Santos, everyone's like, oh no, okay. oh, he dropped gee. cameo bias. It was four hundred dollars, <laughs> and now it's two hundred. I was like, okay, love that. You gotta slash it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, because it was George Santos in the the Senate twink, and now oh, yeah. it's like zeros. So and now no one really talks. But yeah, it's uh, again with her, she's one hundred percent a victim. I get it. But I was saying the like, copycat people who maybe are victims, they might just be like, you know, what? I'm just gonna do this and say it, or, you know, like try yeah. to. Yeah. But I think people like that, like. It's kind of like you have to like live your life and not really like think about that stuff. It's like the same thing with like, you know, people say it's like always preparing for the worst case scenario. Like people say, oh, if you post your kids, you you know, people can get the yeah. idea. But it's like, I don't know if you can like live your whole life yeah. kind of with that pressure of like trying to stop someone bad from doing something bad. Like they're going to do it kind of like regardless, you know, like there's a million other cases of that they can get inspiration by, you yeah. know, so it's like. It's hard to, like, navigate life with that, like, pressure, you know? No, totally, totally. I just, like, you know, sometimes me, I'm even like, damn, I'm kind of jealous. I wish I was getting all this press, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) not that I would do that. But, you know, you just think, like, damn. I always see people get, like, so much attention. I'm like, man, I was just getting this attention right now. (laughs) As an attention seeker, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, man, that sounds good. Even the Golden Globes, who was there? Um... A lot of influencers go. I think it was Brianna Chicken Fry and is it O'Malley, her co-host? Of- oh, they were there. Yes, they got full glam. I was like, okay. Uh, again, love it. I just, I'm always like, how come I never get invited? Uh, maybe it's a little <laughs> jealousy. I'm not really, I was excited for them. They looked really good. They were glam. They were pretty. Uh, O'Malley, O'Malley follows me on TikTok, so I follow her back. And I was like, oh, it's so cool. But I was also like, why don't I get invited? <laughs> why aren't we invited? Why didn't you go, like, physically? Um, I used to go and, like, co- like would work them when I was, like, younger. <laughs> but I just kind of, like, grew out of it because it's so much like especially when you're not like an actual famous person who's like getting awarded anything you know like no one cares about you that's how i feel so everyone yeah. just like talks down to you it's like you feel like you're bothering anyone anywhere you stand you're standing in the wrong like space oh my god i see that all the red carpet like behind the scenes when you just see people like uncomfortably in the yeah. middle of like everyone's photos <laughs> you just try to like take up as little room as possible it's like it's a weird thing to be there when you're not someone you know because it's just like you, no matter what, you feel like you're doing something wrong or like you're in the wrong spot, you know? That's so. how I would feel, but you were saying influencers get paid sometimes to go. They'll get like almost like a brand deal or something where they have to like promote it a certain way. So this mm-hmm. year, the Golden Globes was done by Dick Clark Productions and they do like, they do the streamies. Like, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Random. <laughs> they do, I'm like, serious. They do like all those like American Music Awards, like, you know, those oh. kind of style shows. So it makes sense why there'd be more influencers there than maybe usual because like that's kind of their thing. Boy, you should host the Golden Globes. That's all I was thinking. Oh I was watching my God. It. Why would be better than Joy? 
Joy Coy. Joy Coy. Yeah. I don't like him. We should just get into the gold. So, okay, let's get into it. We'll get into it and then we'll do the gender reveal. Oh, yes. so, oh my God. We have so much to do. I know, I know. We can, I mean, we can also wait till the end. I don't know. <laughs> should we leave it as our last thing? Gender. Maybe it might be messy. I don't know. Moses, you're the set designer. What do you think? Leave it to the end or go in for it? I think one more topic and then we'll kind of reset. Okay. A okay. little intermission. Can... Okay. Yeah. Um, I always find them a little boring, the, these things. But I was like, okay, I, I watched the monologue because of your edit. I was like, let me watch this monologue. Awful. And he yeah. said he found out like 10 days before. And I'm like, first of all, why? Why did they give him 10 days notice and someone else drop out? I, I guess they asked Ali Wong and they asked a couple other comedians and everyone said no. I think, like I said, the Golden Globes are a little tainted because they were canceled and revived. Wait, why were they canceled? Their votes were bought. Like they bought the Emily in Paris like nomination for Netflix or whatever. Oh my God. Yeah. Do you think they still do that? They're still bought? They're under a new ownership, so it's oh. different. And I think now because they have their cancellation, you know, you get canceled, you tighten up a little bit. <laughs> right, right, right. You're like, okay, let's not, let's not get canceled. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Joy Quo was the best they could do? I, I guess so. Mm, but at that point, awful. I'm like, I've known him because he was dating Chelsea Handler for Literally, a while. Literally, that's all I know him from. he did like her uh, Chelsea Show. Lately when she yeah. was on E. But he's just very like bro coded. Like I get that he has, he's a stand-up comedian. He has his audience and like he does well in his audience. But like we talk about this with like influencers and stuff too. Yeah. When you take them out of their audience, you put them somewhere else yeah. and it just doesn't translate. And it was mm. very that. No one was feeling his jokes. Like he made a joke about Taylor Swift like – and the getting the fa- the face cam in the NFL, whatever she was not happy about it. He did. Re- did you hear his, his uh, statement today about it? What did he say? It was. I was looking at it on Twitter right before. He did say that it fell flat, and um, it, it didn't mean to come. He said it was more of a jab at the NFL and not Taylor Swift that they needed to use those shots, and the Golden Globes don't need to use those yeah, shots. I guess. And then, <laughs> so but then, he was trying to say, but he also threw the writers under the bus in I his know, monologue. Yeah, He's yeah. literally like. Uh, I only wrote half these jokes and it's the ones you're laughing at. I'm like, oh my God. Okay, well, then don't say them if you don't think they're funny. The one about Barbie was wild. Like the Barbie. That, oh, the like, boob one? Yeah. yeah. It's about a, a doll with big boobies. Like, that what? Was- <laughs> Even like straight guys, I'm like, that's a weird way to describe Barbie. Yeah, at the Golden Globes, like it's a an award show that's like celebrating the actual film, like the meaning behind the film. You know, you yeah. have Billie Eilish winning for that like sad emotional what song. What was I made for? Yeah, yeah, like this is not the time or place. Tati Westbrook place. like really did something. <laughs> Time, Time and place. place. <laughs> yeah. What's up her on the podcast? Where is she? Oh my God. I think did she, she retire? in Washington. No, she's still close. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really? What did she post? Like just tutorials? Still beauty like, stuff, like hauls and stuff. I mean, yeah. I don't think anyone posts beauty reviews anymore, do they? I think the beauty – it's probably – the beauty community is smaller, but I think they're still, like, doing their thing. I don't thing. think so. I feel like Manny and Laura, they do podcasts. Yeah. Jeffrey's not on – he's he's doing his store on TikTok mm-hmm. in Montana. Like, not in a bad – like, in a good way. No, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, just making money. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No beef 2024. Just tell me about – like, he's killing it. Okay. Yeah, but I'm just I'm saying, like, think... in general, Jacqueline Hill's not doing reviews. Yeah. I don't know. I think – Tati is Tati. It's been like, <laughs> love this new Physician's Formula Foundation. I think she's still – I think there, there's like a, it's obviously smaller, not as many views, but I think there's still like a smaller community. That's Give me like, one beauty influencer still doing reviews on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can tell TikTok like Michaela, Meredith, okay, but on YouTube, that's Maybe. outdated. <laughs> Call Maybe Lucy DeLuca, sometime. get her on there. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean but love it honestly Trixie Mattel sometimes does beauty stuff like she'll do oh, makeup really? stuff yeah okay. every now and then so All right. yeah well that's it's... not really a beauty influencer that's an icon <laughs> probably brand deals her own makeup brand actually oh. <laughs> yeah. okay well that's so different but I mean that's what Chaldi's mm-hmm. like passionate about so I mean if that's yeah, what she likes I, to I'm do I'm not gonna knock it yeah that's, like, that's what I do I still post the same crusty <laughs> videos on my main channel I get no views so <laughs> <laughs> don't ever listen to me what I say but um okay so yeah the monologue <sighs> awful awful yeah it's crazy when you're a stand-up comedian it's like cater to your audience you know because even Ricky Gervais like he's very polarizing at those because he hosted the Golden Globes right yeah but at least times. like that's what I'm saying like you're if you're so funny like even people who don't like get it we'll get it you know what yeah. I mean they'll like laugh at it or they'll like think it's funny but it's just like this one was bad I've only seen him on Chelsea Handler I didn't know what else he's been in or done yeah, I know that he's like really successful when it comes to stand up, like he sells out like big, oh. re- like uh, big venues. But yeah, it was really sad seeing everyone's like reactions. Like people were zooming in on like celebrities' faces at their table while he was on the stage, and no one was, no one was feeling it. Who was no zooming one. in? The camera guys? No, like people on Twitter, because like he, it would be oh. like the wide shot oh. of him, his back like facing the audience, and then you could zoom in Emma Stone just being like. 
Selena Gomez with her uh, hand, her head in her hands. Selena Gomez, oh, so dramatic. Oh my! Everyone was like some type of way. Mara was, was sweet. She was like smiling. She's she like, was like an awkward like. Uh, yeah. Harrison Ford was also just like, what the? Oh, hell? okay, yeah. wow, okay. So the bros even weren't yeah, having it. No one was really feeling it. So I love that they do it a wide shot because that was we were talking about that. We watched the Dave Chappelle one and they show the audience laughing and stuff like that. And like that was the big difference. Moses pointed this out with the Matt Rife show. They never show like the audience. <laughs> Yeah. And you're like, okay, so there's like laughter. Where is it coming from? Like, James Chappelle, you could see the laughter. Joy Coy, you could see that nobody was laughing. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't have that with Matt Rice, so that's why you knew something was up. I guess no one really wanted to take on the job of hosting it. I think the Oscars have gone hostless a few times. I think the Golden Globe should have just been like... Hostless. No I host. would love to host it. You would, would like love. really slayed, I think. I think I would be really good at hosting those. You would have had a musical number in the beginning. Oh my God, absolutely. To Barbie. We could have done you all of it. You would have had a Wonka musical number Wonka, in there too. Wonka, Oppenheimer, I would have wrote a song for. <laughs> I did Iron Claw song this morning. I could have done a whole musical number for everything. That would be so much fun. Oh, how do I get this? How do I get these opportunities? We just, like the weekend, we just got to put it out there enough to where it happens, Yes, the Golden Globes don't invite me, but weekend, <laughs> the week, weekend, Abel sent me a boxes of merch. It was crazy. Crazy. That was I was wild. like, that was wild. Anyways, we get into the weekend stuff later because he has a new album coming out and there's so much. But Ariana has a new album. Oh, we're getting ahead of oh ourselves. Golden Globes. Yes. The, so the big like dramatic moment because it was a pretty like you know normal typical award show like Emma Stone won Oppenheimer. What do you think about Emma Stone winning? I musical I or comedy? Seen her movie? I really actually am going to see her movie. That's one. It, it's two and a half hours. I almost saw it over the weekend, but it was like. Two and a half hours. I was already sleepy beforehand, so I'm like, I can't. It's do a it. sleepy movie. We can do a whole movie review after the gender reveal because there's a lot of movies we saw that <laughs> yeah. I loved. This movie, I was like, maybe I just don't get it. I don't know if I will get it either, but I, I want to support. I like Emma Stone a lot. I love Emma Stone. That curse show, horrible. And the Emma Stone, the new one, I'm just like, I don't get it. Was Fantasia nominated? Yeah, Fantasia for was in nominated. the same category of musical and comedy. Yes. Okay, that the categories my... are crazy because it was Jennifer Lawrence, No Hard Feelings, The Color Purple. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> What? The color purple does get a little bit slighted because it's a musical, yes, but it's also like a it's drama. So, so how do you yeah. compare that to like a comedy, like No Hard Feelings? Fantasia, one hundred percent, should be like sweeping the award show. Like I would say, the color purple is a good movie, but like her performance specifically in it, like oh my god, like makes me want to cry. Like she's just so amazing, and I feel like she's always been like that. And I'm like, oh, how is she not getting all of these awards? And then seeing the Emma Stone one, I'd rather have given it to Jennifer Lawrence for No Hard Feelings, which I thought was the worst movie ever. But, like, I'd rather <laughs> her win it than Emma for this performance because it just was, like, I think they just like those weird performances. I mean, maybe I'm just not cultured or I'm not smart enough to get it, but I just did not get it at yeah. all. And I like Mark Ruffalo. I like Emma Stone. I'm, like, I'm missing something. Is it based on a real story? I don't think so. I don't, okay, no, so I'm, I don't like, so, so confused. But I guess because it was quirky and she's artsy. She's, like, I haven't seen it. I just know that she's been the front runner even, like, before the Globes for, like, all of awards season. She's, like, the what? front runner in, the, in her best actress category. Up, like, even for the Oscars. <laughs> Who was the other nomination nominees besides Jennifer Lawrence and Fantasia? Uh, Fantasia definitely should have won. Margot but. Robbie. Margot Robbie was good. I didn't expect Barbie to lose all the categories. I mean, they only won, like, the award they made up, like, a cinematic event of the year. Oh, which yeah, is, yeah. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> was well and Billie Eilish oh yeah but yeah. the actual movie itself I think Greta Gerwig should have won director I think Definitely. Ryan Gosling should have won like supporting actor yeah I think like you said earlier like I think maybe that it didn't get any it'll switch around by the time like Oscars come I'm around I'm just catching with the Oscars because like everybody it's like it's the don't talk about Bruno of the 2024 See, you know what I mean yeah. everyone sings it it's like the whole thing. I love the Billie Eilish song, but I definitely think. And Billie already has an Oscar, so like. Wasn't it for like 007 or something? Yeah. Come on, okay. She's so good. And the song, I knew the second I heard, saw the music video for that song before Barbie even came out, it was so like beautiful and moving. I'm like, this is such an Oscar song. Yeah. But I'm just, I, I, I do want them to give it to, I'm just. Oh my ten. God. So iconic in every way. But. The Emma Stone is wild to me. Beating <laughs> off Fantasia Barina. Like I, like with the color purple, with the musical, with her singing, with her acting, I was just like, that makes zero sense. That makes zero zero sense to me there's no one that should be Fantasia I'm so confused by it I was like angry because this morning we were talk talking to Glam and they didn't know she was nominated because I was like I didn't watch the categories because all I was thinking is how beautiful she looked I was like oh Fantasia looks so good I'm like was she nominated she must have been and then I didn't know the category and then when I saw it was that I was like how did she lose it to that performance I know. it is kind of sad because there's so much like drama around the movie too that I feel like the drama is kind of like overshadowing the movie um, around the color purple yeah what's the drama basically like you know about this oh no I didn't well, know of course uh, Oprah in his voice oh yeah no 
<laughs> oh, Oprah's involved with the color purple. What did she do? She's a producer, right? She had some some beef with one of the actresses. Wait, and... what? Yeah, basically they yes. weren't yeah. like the industry oh standard God. when they when you're on the film is like you know you have a trailer, you have like uh, s- car service like to set like to your hotel wherever you're staying, mm-hmm. but. Taraji P. Henson been saying at all these like press events that like they she had to like fight to get a trailer, she had to fight to get um car service, like and she just wasn't like no one on the cast was like treated well, you know, oh as far God. as like um the accommodations, which should be pretty standard if like, you know, any big production. So yeah. yeah, it's like I feel like the drama around it is What did like, Oprah say? Did she like rebuttal? She ended well when Taraji had to call Oprah, she said, and then Oprah after the Taraji like kind of like you know, stood up for everyone like on the set. They ended up providing like all this, you know, car service and a trailer and stuff. So oh, wow, yeah, that's um, sad. Yeah, so oh my god, I know. it's such a huge movie. So it is kind of sad. Yeah, I feel like Taraji P Henson's always like the outspoken one, like in a good way. Someone like, has to be. Yeah, yeah for so. sure. Because was it? I think it was like Octavia Spencer too. Said like Jessica Chastain had said something about the equal pay yeah. for her because she was just like you know because it's like you don't want to be that one to speak up, but it is good because Taraji P Henson. Uh, she was talked about something too, like after what was the movie she was or the show where she was Empire, cooking. Like, yeah. After Empire, she should have been like you know the it girl because it was yeah. such a huge success. Oh, especially so, her character and her yeah. yeah. She should have been booked, but then she's like you know everyone like dropped the ball. Like no one could get her like these jobs. She like dropped she her entire getting. team. Yeah. yeah, I know. Which is like, well, I'm glad. I love I love when people can be a little like outspoken and speak the truth. I know Cat Williams recently too was like on a podcast just like speaking his truth about everything. I was just, like, you know, what? I kind of love that because people are so scared. I'd be scared too. I'm like, I don't want to go against anyone and be whatever. Yeah. But I like when people can just kind of. And it gets hurt, and then something gets done. They should get car service, especially because they're all like huge actresses and actors in that movie. They should get the car service. They should get everything. Yeah, and I think too. I mean, there's, it's sad because people are like, well, you're, I don't have car service in my job or whatever. But when you're working like such long days, like on R- Riverdale, um, <laughs> <laughs> randomly. Are you at Riverdale, Sam? No, I'm not. But uh, uh. I saw this getting brought up again because I kind of forgot it. Like. They they weren't given car service when they were working on Riverdale and shooting days were eighteen hours long. Oh my gosh! And one of them, KJ Apple, got in a car accident because he was driving oh. like so late after working so long that he was like falling asleep and he was involved in a car accident. We provide car service here at Just Trish, so I'm like, <laughs> if they were able to do it, you should do color purple. Any guests that like don't have a car or they come from out of town, I always give them car services, so like you should be able to do that. Because the other thing is, is yes, your typical nine to five job, you're not having car service, but this is like a movie studio making like billions of dollars. They have so much money behind this, they can afford cars service yeah. for their people the actors are the reason people are gonna see it and that's you know so people should be paid what they're worth and it's like the industry standard like every production you go to is gonna provide this stuff so why when it's like a cast of color are they not being provided you know well, that's interesting too yeah. yeah and that would be i didn't even like think about that part because it is yeah that's because it is standard and these are all like a-list and if it was that interesting yeah uh, but hopefully things turn around for the rest of the award season you know i mean if it is in the win like that's like that's crazy that's odd yeah. i don't know i don't know what that is but that's something that seems yeah i didn't oppenheimer i didn't see oppenheimer and it was like I think you did got see there... it though no did what not what about you with your boyfriend no he wanted to but i talked, my... I talked myself out of it oh my god <laughs> i didn't see it either like no thank it's you it's so long it's so long it's so and like long. i get it it's like probably a great film and stuff no. i get it i get it you know but I, something about i know it's the bomb i don't know whatever i'm just like <laughs> i don't know either i don't know I, Barbie should have gotten a little something, something. But oh, like, like you said, Greta Gerwig. She's so like yeah, acclaimed. Like, how did she Greta not get Gerwig. it? Yeah. The big moment, did you see, was uh, Taylor and Selena were caught gossiping. Did you see that? <gasps> I just saw this right before. Good thing I looked because I was like, who was the other person? It was Taylor, Selena, and... And Kelly Teller, Miles Teller's wife. Miles Teller's married? Yes. Oh. I didn't know anything about him either, but... Kelly, his wife's really pretty. And now oh. she's like best friends with Taylor. So that, I love uh, that. Okay. Yeah. So they were all gossiping or the, not gossiping. They were all talking at their table. Yeah. So, so Taylor brought Kelly as her date to the Golden Globes. And I don't Without even, Miles? Miles wasn't there? No, just Kelly. Which oh, Liv. Girls night. Yeah. Oh, I love. Girl, just take girls night? Yeah. Girls night. That's everything. I wish Taylor Swift would invite me to the Golden oh, Globes. Know, that would be so fun. <laughs> and then there was Talk actually- Talk about size comparison though. I saw the carpet. <laughs> no, you can't say <laughs> okay, that yeah, anymore. <laughs> Your resolution. <laughs> we would look great. We would compliment each other. That's where I was going. <laughs> just even the height she's so tall so I the know. height difference would be something tall but. skinny people I, I don't love staying next to but I will because it's 2024 and I think I can represent my size fine too <laughs> but first of all I have to preface Audience cam, always messy. Like, I love an audience cam because you will always get some tea because everyone kind of forgets they're being filmed, you oh, know? For, I feel like 
since Wendy Williams cam operator, do you remember when oh. the cam, <laughs> she would talk about something being like ugly, disgusting, and like pan <laughs> someone just like, <laughs> nasty. yeah, it's very much, there's a whole montage of it on YouTube of just it's like, the that. camera, yeah. We should, yeah, we should investigate, <laughs> just Trish investigates to see if it's the same camera operator. It could very well be. so messy. <laughs> So Selena comes up, Taylor gets a little shook, like she doesn't know who's hugging her, and then she realizes Selena. All of a sudden, Selena comes, whispers in Taylor's ear, and she's gagged the house. Like, she's, like, <laughs> making big eyes, her mouth is dropping. But the whisper is this way, right? It's, it's a mix. So there's, like, there was different angles. It's like the freaking <laughs> JFK assassination or whatever. Like, there's so many different angles. Yeah. I love that they did it at the award show. Like, wait till you get home. <laughs> like, I was, sometimes most will be, like, if someone's, like, right there in her house, like, with Tommy years and my mom will tell me about someone who's, like, still here, I'm like, they're still here. Like, <laughs> stop talking about them. <laughs> Yeah. And it was hard to see, like, because you would just have to read lips, you know? So it was hard to really make out, like, what they were saying. <laughs> but a reporter there was just, I don't think they knew what they were capturing, was just trying to video, like, Taylor and Selena, like, at the table having a moment. But you can hear um, Kelly tell her, she goes, Timothy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once people heard that, everyone started like re-examining Ooh. the tape, and you can kind of see um, Selena say something about taking a photo and saying no, and then you hear Kelly say Timothy. Timothy yeah. So people kind of deduced and stitched together that Selena had asked Timothy for a photo because they were actually in a movie um, together a long time oh. ago. Yeah. And um, so people did do Selena asked Timothy for a photo and Kylie told him no. Oh, wait. How do they defer that Kylie said no, not Timothy? For me, you know, I like to go with things that are fun. And that's like a fun story to think that <laughs> Kylie shut it down. Kylie's like, hell no, no you're taking a photo with Selena. Could you so, imagine though? Oh my God. But and then remember like Selena and Kylie have beef because of the whole like Haley Bieber uh, thing? Remember like when, uh, the eyebrows. Yes. Yes. That screenshot. So mm, well, what would upset the car Jenners? are a little bit mean a little mean girls you know <laughs> yeah. that can make sense it could definitely make sense granted some things don't really add up like i feel like if selena went up to the table people would have seen her go up to the table yeah but then where's I'm like, that video then i'm like maybe someone on her team asked timothy you know like maybe yeah. she sent someone asked timothy to take a photo because that's all that's embarrassing to go up to the table knowing kylie's there she talks shit about you you know so maybe she's trying to set it up and like you said there would definitely be video there's like all these angles <laughs> of these three talking there would be timothy and selena yeah. you know yeah I think it's a fun story, though, and because of that, I'm choosing to believe it because it's silly. And that is funny. And the Timothy? Did yeah. you know his name is actually pronounced Timothy? Yeah. Did you know that? Yes. Oh, my gosh. French. I've, been, I've been in a Timothy, like, like what do they call it? Rabbit hole. Like, Oh, I love that. I, yeah, him speaking French. I'm like, well, I want to learn French. He's like, oh. And Moses Beal over here, he's like, mm, he's not a natural French speaker because it's choppy. I was like, okay, French expert. I, I guess listen to right. him. Huh? I said he must have only one parent that is Oh, French. my God. And judgy. sure enough, we... No, it's not judging. That's judgy. <laughs> it's noticing that his French was not French. as smooth as somebody that <laughs> spoke it his whole life. Because I was so impressed. I'm like, listen and to him sure speak enough, French. only one of his parents is French. Oh, my God. He knew. Oh, yeah. my clocked God. It. <laughs> Moses clocked him a tay from a mile away. <laughs> it was so good. I was so impressed. I was, like, playing him speaking French for him. And he's like, mm, no, it's a little choppy. I was like, oh, my God. It sounds, like, perfect to me, but okay. It's somebody that English is my second language. <laughs> you can tell when somebody's not fluent, you uh, know? Like, they're not as smooth. Oh, my God. That's he sounded pretty here. fluent to me. He sounded so good. I loved it. I was, I loved it. It was so good. But he didn't win. Well, who who won his category? Oh, um, Paul Giamatti. What? What was he? I don't even know what he played in. You know him. He's the guy that's like from Sideways. No, I know who he is, oh. but I just we What's haven't the movie? seen any. The holdovers. The holdovers. Oh, yeah. the holdovers. Never saw it. I haven't and seen then, either. But the flip side of this for TV, we always we found White Lotus because we saw them winning so many Golden Globes. That's how we discovered it. We were like late to it. But now, when we talked about this on the podcast, The, the Bear. Bear. I knew you. Do you gonna... watch it? I've seen it. Yeah. Do you like it? I like it. I don't stand. It's like so intense, so it's like hard for me to like really get into it. But I like it. I enjoy. What's it. intense about it that it's like mm. season one, especially they're cooking and like they're in the kitchen and they're like screaming at each other all the time. So it's like Ma the door. I'm over here cooking. Where's this? Where's the steak? Where's the risotto? It's like very. It's kind of like house kitchen kind of. <laughs> to binge watch is really hard because okay. this is like eight episodes of just like yelling. Yelling. I get that. But yelling it's very is... good. You liked it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Jeremy Allen White stand now because of Iron Claw. Oh, Calvin that explains Klein, it. That explains this. it. Him and Kylie at the Golden Globes. That was something. The like, kissing? <laughs> yeah. It That's was... a wild couple. 2024 prediction. They're going to get engaged. Yeah, that was my 2024 prediction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you take and you me? said, you told me no. <laughs> and then you switched up. Well, I saw it at the Golden Globes. I was like, oh, I feel like this is something. <laughs> 
I don't remember things. Don't uh, hold this against me, people. It was like another Drag Race. I think when I said I didn't watch Drag Race, and then they show a clip of me in like 2012 <laughs> watching Drag Race. I did watch it one season. It was with Juju B. It was like the first season. I think BB won. Like I was, I did watch one season of it. Okay, but oh, that was funny. literally 2010 or something. So I was like, wow, people really calling me out. People don't call the Rock out. Did you see the Rock being like, oh, I never had In and Out, and then they oh, showed yeah. 2017 of him meeting In and Out. Give us a break. We're busy. Okay, <laughs> me and the Rock are just we're we're busy. Uh, we have lives. We have kids. That like. Is funny. You can't remember everything you said. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. <sighs> People just really be going with it. But uh, um, it. that's so funny. I really, I, I don't remember. <laughs> that's funny. But they do look like. There's so many people in the room, but when they're looking at each other, it's like it's only them. It seems very like weirdly intimate. Does it seem intimate. real? Not that we're like critiquing, but does it? I don't know. I, th- I think so. I think at this point. Because it's like she went from Tyga to Travis Scott to Timothee Chalamet. Timothee has some swag. He really he does. does. I do love him. There's yeah. This, this is like such a playground rumor, but again, <laughs> it's like kind of silly, so I'm choosing to believe it, even though it's probably fake. To preface, there's like this whole like rumor that Timothee spread like I think it was like chlamydia around like <gasps> his whole college. Oh my God. And it's like, and for some reason, it's like everyone on Twitter always brings it up because it's like, it's always been going around. It's kind of haunted him since he like came up. Did he ever from, say anything about it? No, he's never talked about That's it. It's so just funny. like a little playground rumor that I think it's like so. The but, thing with, yeah, chlamydia, you don't know where it came from. <laughs> you can't really pinpoint. Yeah. I remember I had chlamydia and my doctor's like, we should alert your partners. And I was just like, but who knows who gave it to who and what? And I'm also like, don't make it seem like I'm giving it to people. Like someone gave it to me. <laughs> I don't miss the dating so girl for that reason. Yeah, with Timothee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it great? Chlamydia is wild. I feel like everybody gets chlamydia. That's like so crazy. I don't know. It spreads so crazy because people don't know. Like guys don't really know that they have it. There's no like symptoms yeah. really. I don't even think I did. I think that's what damaged my tubes in the first place was like I had it for like two years and didn't know. And really? Then, yeah. I had like scarring on it. That's why I had to get those like little like clearing of the tubes and stuff like that because I like scarring from it. Like I, started, like, I was told I wasn't going to get pregnant because like your tubes are so scarred up. From chlamydia, because if you let it go for too long, it can be like dangerous. I guess. I don't so know. Get tested, people. Get tested. <laughs> Although I guess if you're getting chlamydia from Timothy Chow, I mean, I guess that's better than just some random person off <laughs> Tinder. At least it's a story, I guess. Oh my god, I would probably. No, nah, I don't want to promote unhealthy behavior, but maybe if it was Timothy Chow, I was single. I'm like, yeah, I guess I could risk it. <laughs> I think there's a, a lyric from one of the weekend songs where he's like, you're the one I want to take it off and roll the dice on, which I think it means, right? Like you, you're chancing either an STD or getting them pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, take it off and roll the dice on. Right? Is that what that means? I analyze these I songs. I would assume pregnant. I would assume. Yeah. Oh, right. Because then he's like, I want to have a baby with the right one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love that song. It's called Lost in the Fire. It's so, mm, I think about it all the time. It's such a good song. Uh, um, interesting. Wow, that must be a lucky girl. I wonder who he wrote that about. He's like, I'll take it off and roll the dice on you. Could you imagine getting pregnant by the weekend? That's. I know, but you can. <laughs> that's wild to think about. Oh my God, because that's like. There's website. No, I think it's. A, I think it was Architectural Digest. I think it's a legitimate one. But we looked up his house. It's like a seventy million dollar house. Oh wow! And he like the person he bought it for. Is this, is this too much information? Am I? I guess not. It was no, probably. It was on. Just read it. Online. It was on an article. It was like Architectural Digest. Yeah. And the person he bought it from. They bought the house only like five years prior for like. 30 million was it 30 or 40 or less 20 something 27 million yeah. and then he bought it for 70 million and i was like what why did you do that <laughs> and also how much money do you have i was it's the one where the idol was I mean, he obviously has hundreds yeah. and hundreds so of i mean he needs to be careful who he takes it off and roll the dice <laughs> on because you'd be paying so much money was it 50 I mean, what a song that's like oh have a baby by me baby be a millionaire do you remember that song no oh, when i was a kid i like really took that to heart i was like okay i need to have a baby <laughs> With someone like 50 Cent, because then I'll be a millionaire. I thought that was the way to go. I mean, I think it is the way to go for some girls, for sure. I mean, if Nick Cannon can support so many, I think The Weeknd can support many more. The Weeknd would have cute babies. (laughs) Selena Gomez, they should have had a baby together. Oh, they would have had a pretty one. Mm -hmm. They would have looked like a doll, because both of them have like little doll faces. I miss when they I wonder what happened. That was only eight months. Did you know that? It was short-lived. That seems about right, yeah. Yeah. They were cute together. I don't like Selena's new man. I don't. Oh, well. He's kind of a YouTube stan. He was on Zach Choi's like ASMR videos, oh Benny Blanco. God. You don't like him? I think the way that she talks about him gives me a little like. What did she say? Well, she you see after the Golden Globe, she posted her making out with him, and she said, "I won." I love that. Everyone's <laughs> like, "Girl, we don't want him. Like, relax." <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. I love when like people stand so hard for like their person. Like I love that. Like I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna caption. I'm gonna caption. I won after <laughs> you lose not being nominated for anything. Yeah. <laughs> At the Oscars, I'm like I won. 
<laughs> Moses is the prize. I have to just say, because I've been thirsting after all these leading men in Hollywood lately, like Zac Efron and stuff like that. But Moses is the prize. I was talking to Glam today about it. I was talking to Ari because we were talking about our crushes and stuff like that. And I was like, God, Zac Efron is just so much. He's, he's, he might be my number one, okay? He might be my number one. But I was like, I don't think I would ever, like, if Zac Efron wanted to marry me, I don't think I could ever leave Moses. Because I was like, you know what? Like, he's not going to, like, care about me the way Moses does. He's not going to, like, attend to me the way Moses is. He's not going to be patient with me the way Moses is. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I mean, that's not a possibility, but I'm just saying if it was, I wouldn't leave you. I mean, everything is a possibility. No, but, it's not. I swear it's but not. it's good that. Oh, well, the poss- oh, well, him wanting to marry me. Oh, yeah. No, that's not a possibility. But I'm just saying, like, even in that case scenario, because I do think about this, like, I don't know why, because we have no interaction, but me and Abel, we've DM'd. Okay, there's that. But but uh, me and Zach know. But I was like, I don't think I would. You are the prize. I really do think that. I hope people know that. I know you know that, but I feel like. People always say if Moses was talking about a girl this way and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, I was telling, I was saying this in Glam too. I was saying like if Ariana Grande wanted to have like a hookup with Moses, like, I don't know. I feel like if you were like, so not me, I wouldn't do it. But I'm saying if you were like, I'd be like, I don't know, go do it. No. You're saying, but I really, I don't know. Anyways, that's where I know we talk about this. I just want to make it clear Moses is the prize. Okay. He is my prize. (laughs) I don't care if the weekend and Zach Efron want to date me. Okay. I would pick Moses every (laughs) single time because Moses is bolognese. (laughs) <laughs> that's how he brings it home you know that what I mean that should be my that's... new name she changed my last name <laughs> Moses Bull it's so it good babe good. <laughs> it was so good we had it twice in one week and he made it for my family oh, but, and... but I think it's a huge compliment because I think Zach Efron is a new movie <laughs> that oh was oh my god we gotta, we gotta mean, get he, he deserves an Oscar I hope he gets yeah, it how were they not like, nominated for Golden Globes? Such a, he was such a great actor such a great character such a great like <sighs> he looked amazing and everything and um, I'm happy that you chose me over him <laughs> I was I'm a Zach Efron stand through and through. I mean, I did a whole bet on it music video. My goal, okay, here's my vision for 2024. I think my manifestation for this, um, because I got in a Zach Efron kick. I literally, I think it was New Year's Day. We watched what Greatest Showman, High School Musical Three. I was like watching all of it, and I would love to get fit after my baby. I'm gonna get really, really fit. I'm gonna get ripped. And I'm going to make my music come back. You know how I make my music videos, recreating things. I would love to do the High School Musical 3 sequence, Scream. Do you, have you seen the movie? Yeah. Where he has all the basketballs and he's like sliding around like bye, bye, bye. You know, where he's <laughs> yeah. like going over the like, – and he was so ripped and so physically. I'm like, that's my next Zac Efron one. I would love to do that. And I would love to do The Greatest Showman where I play both parts, Hugh Jackman and Zac Efron. And I was like, oh, thanks, but no, I think I'm good to go. I hate to – but where he's like dancing on the bar and then he does like this little jump down on the stool. I'm like, those are my two Zac Efron videos. I would like to recreate this year when I get like ripped, when I'm like shredded and I can physically do all that stuff. And people are gonna like, oh my God, Trish, like, how can you do this? You know, because people cloud me for riding the golf cart instead of running and bet on it. And first of all, I had knee surgery, uh, not knee surgery, I had a knee injury, injury like the like literally two weeks before that. So I couldn't physically have run. I was in good shape back then, I was on tour, but I'm gonna make my comeback this year. And I visualize doing that. I just love Zac Efron. I'm such a Zac Efron fan. How do we get him on the podcast? Like, for real, how do we get him on the podcast? Because I know Abel doesn't do podcast interviews, although he has coffee coming out. Maybe he will. But, like, how do we get Zac Efron? I feel like he would come on the podcast. I think so. I think he would. I know someone. I know someone who should do my hair that, like, kind of dated him. Or dated him, I think. She said it was a little wild. The stories I heard, I was like, yeah, they're gonna, it wouldn't be compatible, but... Well, when jealous. he was younger, he was he kind of went through a lot though. So Oh, I did he? Like now, Do you know? You know so much about his personal life. Well, remember he had he got like into an altercation over like drugs and like uh oh. and down and like Skid Row. Remember he was trying to like what? you remember this? When he was younger, I forget what year. Like maybe, after high school musical? Yeah, I think it was like oh wait, a few years after high school musical. I wanna say maybe like maybe like twenty seventeen or oh. something. He went to like buy drugs in Skid Row in downtown what? LA and he got um, I think jumped or something. He it was a whole thing. I mean, he's so rich. He doesn't need to go to the Skid Row to get drugs. I, well, you know when you're using and stuff. So, but he, he that's why he like. Oh, I when didn't he know. went through a lot. Yeah, that makes me like him even more. Like I just love someone like that. Like that they've gone through some shit. And yeah. I feel like yeah. I feel like he's definitely probably had. I don't know. I just oh god, he's just so good. Did you see Iron Claw? No. You know, it's like it's a biopic. It's like oh, really yeah, dramatic. Like... It's not really like a. I, I don't like wrestling, but I loved this one. I was just like, <laughs> it was it was so good. Like it was. I, I was my favorite of the whole season for sure. Yeah, it's good. It's not so dramatic. They actually did a good job at making it not too tragic compared to the real yeah. life story. <laughs> That movie was the saddest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Compared to what they actually went through, well, the family, compared to what we looked up after, yeah, then it's but, like okay, there's more tragedy. Right. But that, but you know, they made it well. You know, it, like oh it's, it's that's bearable. one. <laughs> that's one. I don't even know how it was nominated for Golden Globe. That's crazy. I know. Bunch I, of hot guys in it. You should go see it. Like Jeremy Allen White's in it. I know, but it doesn't get you to the movies. No. Really? Yeah. Wow. You can't I'm be. A, I'm a hard. Yeah. I'm okay. a hard sell. Unless it's a cute girl, and then I'm like, okay. That's. 
so crazy to me. That's so funny. (laughs) That's so funny how you're so pro-girl. I mean, not funny. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with gay people being pro-girl. I'm just saying, like, to me, I would just think, I'm like, I'm a girl. little undies and stuff. Yeah, I appreciate, oh my God, he was in his undies so much. I don't know. It's weird. I'm very not that person. I really don't drill over people, but I don't know. Something about this one, I was just very much like, wow, I really love Zach. I would love to have him come on, do a little TikTok. I would love to do TikTok with him. Oh my God, that'd be kind of Like, where it's like, try! And he walks in, right now I can hardly breathe. Oh, you can. Like, I I visualize that happening. (laughs) And that's all I really need. So come on, turn it on. It's time to turn it on. Did we high school? Mu- oh, your fa- I love friends went musical. in. We're in high school. Musical. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, Zach Efron came to my high school. Yeah. What do you mean he came there? Zeke, who was the one that dated Ashley Tisdale in the movie. I know Zeke. Yeah, he was yeah. the cooker. He was the yeah, baker. Yeah, the creme brulee guy. Yes. He was a senior when I was a freshman in high school, oh, wow. and he played football. And Vanessa, I think Vanessa, Zach. I think Ashley, too, all came oh to watch God. him play. What? A what game. a flex. I know. Wow, that's cool. They were humble back then. They're like, let's go to this let's high school. This, yeah. <laughs> were you there? <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. But Did you say I, anything? I no, I couldn't barely even see. I just knew they were there because, like, everyone was, you know, talking about it. They called oh, my God. Yeah, Zach Efron back in then was. Yeah. He was the, the air boy. Like, he was the air boy. Yeah. I wanted to be he's in high school kinda, musical. He still is the boy, Is he? I think. Okay, so I don't know. Because I'm like, I feel like he is, but then it's like he gets snubbed from these things, and like I don't know, he's not really out there. But he got a star on the Walk of Fame, so he's still, <gasps> That's you know. True. Okay, he's yeah. a boy. Oh my god, I wanted to be in every movie because we're, I think we're the exact same age. He might, maybe he's younger or maybe a year older. I don't know, but I wanted to be in High School Musical so bad. I wish I could have been like Sharpay or Gabrielle. Then he did Hairspray, and they were doing oh, a casting yeah. call for Nikki Blonsky, and I'm like the same age as, oh yeah, Nikki Blonsky, but <laughs> Tracy Turnblad, and I was just like, I wanted to be. I think I auditioned. I think I sent in a tape. Mm, did not get it. Obviously, I can't sing, but I had to be. Tracy Turnblad to his Link Larkin. That was like my whole dream. Like, oh my God, it was so. And then I just, I just, I just really love him. I don't know. I love everything. I don't like his frat era, like his bro era where he was like neighbors, bad Santa. Yeah. It was it bad Santa? Bad grandpa. I don't know. One of those. It's not, I don't know. I didn't like him for a minute there. Baywatch came back. I liked it, but I love him. If anyone knows that guy from, please, <laughs> please, I love him so much. Him and Abel, it's, they're my, they're my two at the moment. For 2024. Okay. For 2024. Anyways, back to the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> The Golden Globes. Who's yeah. best dressed? I think Fashion Police should come back. I loved Fashion Police. I kind Police. of did too, actually. It Northwest could host it. But it, was <laughs> <laughs> it was problematic, but like kind of funny at the time. It was. John Rivers was just like so funny. So. I feel like get Lucy DeLuca, Northwest. <laughs> Get the whole panel on there. <laughs> That's kind of iconic. Yeah. That I think would that would be, be everything. Yeah. Uh, who was the best dressed? Um, I think Margot Robbie. I loved I know. I loved her. You know J-Lo was mad. She's probably like, oh, damn. This girl wearing the same outfit but looking better. She was superstar Barbie, Margot Robbie. That's yeah, what she was. Did you know? Was, yes. Oh. And then she did it for her after party look. She transitioned to the black one. Oh, I didn't see. Yes. Wait, which one? I think it's like a the superstar Barbie, but there's a black version of it where uh, it's, yeah. I loved her. Her whole style on that press tour was just everything. I love Margot Robbie. Me too. I'm She's so pretty. Do. She's so beautiful. I love her so much. She was definitely the best dressed in my opinion, too. I loved her pink outfit. Worst dressed. Ooh. I guess maybe Selena Gomez. I didn't like her dress. The the little the high red. low. Yeah. It was giving um, um prom, but yeah. But she's. I mean, she still looked good. Yeah. So. Should we do this gender oh reveal? Oh my god! Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. You were saying there was conspiracy oh, theories. Yeah. So uh, my boyfriend's friends have been asking him to ask me if I know the gender. I'm like, no, I don't know. So some think that it's a boy because you posted a lot of blue. So everyone's like, oh. Why did I post a lot of blue? The blue table. And that literally been is wearing our table. Blue. I'm sorry, we can't get a half boy, half pink table. <laughs> and then some people are like she's so obvious about posting blue, so maybe she's trying to throw us off, and it's actually <laughs> a girl. So it really could go. I don't know. I keep flip flopping. At first, I thought boy, and then everyone said that you were throwing people off. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's a girl. But then I'm also like, Trisha isn't really the Easter egg type. She doesn't really overthink. I don't. I don't. <laughs> nothing. I overthink nothing. And I also feel like, yeah, because the name Elvis, people, because Tana also said boy. Oh, everyone's thinking yeah. boy. What do you think? My first thought was boy. I guess I'll stick okay. with boy. That's what was You're my going gut instinct. Yeah. Because you've also just said that this pregnancy <laughs> was a little different from Malibu. Oh, okay. And so, okay, I, I think can't wait people see that. Why, yeah. All right, well, and there's been a boy balloon behind me this whole time. Oh, but there's is a that girl. Easter egg? <laughs> <laughs> there's the Easter egg, no, just, and we're starting boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> and Moses is in blue. And Moses is blue. Yes, these are our gender year, reveals. Pink, so oh. Oh no. Okay, so should we cut it? Oh my gosh. Okay, ready? Oh my god. Okay. But they can't see if it's on the side. Here in the front. Not the belly. Oh my god. <laughs> Just the, this what about bit. the leg? Okay, ready? Okay. Oh my gosh, okay, ready? One, One two, two, three. three. <gasps> There's no way to what see is the collar. Other? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yay! I was wrong. Uh. Oh my god! <laughs> Can I see the collar? It's a, it's a 
girl. It's a girl. Oh my god. A girl named Elvis. Oh my god. Yay. <laughs> oh my god. This cake though. Oh. That looks good. Oh my god. Good this morning, fresh. It's girl. A girl again. <laughs> Girl called it. Oh, yes. Oh my god. It's a girl. We are, I'm a girl mom, I think, forever. I love it. Me too. It's a girly space over here. It's a girly space. Know? The pink aesthetic <laughs> is giving. I can't even picture being a boy mom. Like, I like the idea of first having the boy because I like having an older brother. And I think I like having a boy girl. But the more I think about it, I'm like, I wouldn't know what to do with a boy at all. And every time I see a little boy, we had another little boy we recently saw, and he's like wrestling and something, just like throwing himself everywhere. I'm like, no, Malvo was just like in distress about it. I was like, <laughs> so I, even if we, even if we have a third, which we're not trying for a third, we think two and done. We think we're done with two for sure. But you know, if it happens, a third or whatever, it's like, I still feel like a girl. And I feel like we'll be like the Kardashian 2.0, you know what I mean? We'll just have Love a little, that. Yeah, yeah, I just think we're just girl vibes over here. Although there's Rob, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's true. Well, but also that. <laughs> I forgot about that. We it, really though. wanted, you know, for Malibu to have a sister. So, so cute. To, to be like that's more than what we want, you know, what's best for her right now. Yeah. And with edge, like a small age gap between them and you have a sister and they'll be you just be fun. You have a best friend. I love my life. brother. We were very close growing up, but I just love having a sister more now. Yeah. Like, and I, I, even as a kid, I, my sister played with me more. She looked up to me. And we just like whatever. I just, you know, like I said, I love them both, but I think I always like having a sister a little more. It's just gonna be easier to like princess parties and just sharing stuff. And I mean, again, if I had a little boy, he'd be having a pink playground. Like, we're not gonna rechange <laughs> it all, whatever. But um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm ex I'm so excited. I really like. I was shocked. I'm shocked each time. Like the first time I thought it was boy, I thought it was boy again because this has been so. Even now, I'm like eating so much. I'm like you know whatever. I was like, oh, I think it's a boy. I've seen a lot of meat, but um. But it seems yeah. like the a lot of the difference in the pregnancy is because it's the second one. Oh. You know what I mean? So it's not the first. So the second one has its own different like. It's wild. Your body is different. Like your body was already high. Like so many things are different. This so, is gonna be a girl. A little. Yeah. This is gonna be a mini me. I know people hate when I say that, but this is a Taurus girl. It's a year of the dragon. I'm also a dragon. So we have a Taurus dragon mm -hmm. girl coming. So just watch out, everybody. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. And yeah, it's a and girl. And a girl named Elvis. So she's not like, there's no expectation because there's no one like her. She's there's the no, first, oh my God, there's no yeah. female there's no girl Elvis. Elvis. So in, in that way, she's not like trying to be some, you know, if you're a man oh named Elvis. Yeah. There's She's an equivalent. coming out, breaking down barriers. Yeah. Oh, She's like, yeah. Oh okay. Wait, no, no gender here, okay? We picked a boy name for her. So it's just like, she's just she's just her. I mean, we did a gender reveal, so I guess there is technically a gender. But <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm super excited. I love, I love boy names for girls. I always have. But I just think like Elvis is such a cool one, you know? Because I mean, there's a lot of people. Like there's a Jack and there's a Charlie and like all those things for girl names, which is very cute. But I just love an Elvis. You know what I mean? Yes. And I'm first Elvis girl. So I'm super excited. Just trailblazing oh my god <laughs> so, so, I'm so when you told me you had there was five boys in your family because iron claw i think there were six boys i think reason you should have watched it although they literally are all unalive now but oh. <laughs> or passed away. it's so sad it's like well, only one lived and there was five there's five that passed away that's wild anyways you need to watch it this is so good but um i mean so sad but when you said you were one of five boys i was like i i, I don't know what i do that sounds yeah, horrible. Yeah, it was very debaucherous in my household. So it was always something. Some one was punching walls. One had like oh, all no. these reptiles and rats and stuff. Oh yeah, no! It was pretty. It was pretty wild. So no, I think we're having like a Bella and a Gigi Hadid. Minus the mom that tells them don't eat cake. You can have all the cake they want, of course, like that. But uh, oh, those are the two sisters. Those are what came to mind. I don't want anyone to read into it. What other two sisters? There was other two sisters. <laughs> Haley and Hillary Duff. Oh, period. Okay, okay yeah. Haley. Halle Bailey Chloe and, and Halle. Yeah, yeah, Chloe and Halle. Okay, yeah, yeah. Beyonce and Solange. Beyonce, well, <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't want to Solange. Well, maybe. She's kind of feisty. Yeah. Anyway, Solange is good. Halle Bailey having a oh, baby. Oh, my God, I know. What? what? I get it. I get it, breaking your peace. But why are people keeping it a secret? Like, being pregnant and getting the intention as being a pregnant person is just the best thing in the whole world. I think because her boyfriend and baby daddy is, like, very controversial. So I think mm. that probably has something to do with it because even – like early on in the relationship, there was a lot of controversy around the relationship because the fans do not vibe with DDG. Um, He's a rapper. Yeah, or I think he did. I think he was a YouTuber first. YouTuber oh. turned rapper. Oh my I'm pretty god! Sure. Good yeah. for him. Wow, getting Halle mm -hmm. Bailey. Yeah, well, that's why everyone's like, ooh. Everyone's like, congrats, e Hallie. <laughs> right. It's like the Kiki Palmer situation where they're like, we have a feeling. Yeah. I don't know anything about the DGG, but I hope they're good. He seems like he, he talks highly of her, which is good. He said she's a great mom. Like. 
Yeah. So, hopefully. Yeah, I'm hoping for the best. You know, I'm giving people the benefit of the doubt. Halo's 2024. a great name, especially for a boy. I love Halo yeah, for a boy. Yeah, Halo's a sweet name. I bet Hallie, that baby's beautiful. Hallie and Halo, that's so oh, cute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Love a double H. So cute. But it is crazy that she kept it secret. She was still doing press yeah. while she was pregnant. For color everyone, purple. Like. Yeah. Big cupcake dressing. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love I, it. And look, in retrospect, that was so camp that she like. I love it, yeah. She I was like, was... I'm not pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so funny. Where? Right. Like, doing, like you said, doing press. At least Kylie, she like, you know, hid for her first pregnancy. Yeah. So it kind of was a surprise. But this is like, well, it's, it's kind of obvious. So. Yeah. The, it's like everyone knew. And it's funny. She literally would say no. I think there's this one Snapchat. Oh, she did? Yeah. There's a Snapchat of her and someone, uh, she's like a Snapchat Q&A. And someone was like, oh, your pregnancy nose is so cute. And she's like, this is just my nose. I'm not pregnant. Oh, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, she like denied. <laughs> yeah. She literally has said that she's like, not oh pregnant. no. So, I mean, the nose is the worst thing to say because pregnancy nose is the worst. Like at the end, you just get mine got really swollen last time, so it is kind of like the meanest thing to say because what if she wasn't? And even if what if she was, you still don't want to hear that you have a swollen <laughs> yeah. nose. Like that is a weird thing. But I love that she just denied it. She's like, no, what are you talking about? She's so. Cute. I wonder why. Yeah. You think it's just to, for her piece, or you think she like thought it might hinder her work? I, maybe a little bit of both. I mean, she had such a big year, so she must have been pregnant. Already when Little Mermaid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. She so, had it, yeah, for sure. So I think she, going in, like, she knew, had Little Mermaid and she knew she had color purple and it was such a big year for her. So, yeah, mm. I think it just, like, you don't want that to overshadow, like, your actual work. That you know? is true. So, I always think about that. Like, I could have been in White Lotus 3 had I not gotten pregnant. Yes. It's okay. This baby will be here May. <laughs> I'm ready to start working. <laughs> I don't know what it'll be. Maybe Abel's movie. I don't know. Is there any filmed? Is his movie No, I don't filmed? think it's filmed yet. The, the Weekend one is based off of Misery. Have you seen Misery? No, I saw you talking about it though. How did you? Are you not a movie person? You're kind of a cinephile. Like you have I'm kind a of cinephile. like a highbrow film taste. Oh, a hundred percent. I was obsessed with movies. I used to go like rent like ten movies a week, and I would just like I would stay home from school and just watch movies. I like I've seen like every single movie. I love movies. God, Misery is so good. It's a Stephen King one, and uh, do you know uh, Kathy Bates? Yes, of course. she's in it. She yeah. plays like this obsessed. I love movies about obsession, which is why I like Saltburn, and I want to get into Saltburn because I think I have hot takes on Saltburn. <laughs> because did you watch it? No, Oscar! I passively, like, my boyfriend was watching it, and I kind of, I know everything that happens. It's so good. It's about an obsessed person. Anyway, I like movies about obsession, because I also (laughs) obsess about people. I also obsess about Moses, too. Just so people know, I had an obsession with Moses. I drove to his house when he didn't want me to. I mean, I don't advocate for that, but I was was (laughs) on something. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, the obsession was real. I was obsessed (sighs) with Moses when he wasn't with me. I I think I called you, what, uh, maybe a thousand times. Why didn't you block me when I did that? I don't know where I, I never blocked. No, okay, I but I called you. you literally like a thousand times over three days and you never well, it answered. it doesn't mean that I wanted you to stop, but at the oh. same time, I think it was exactly 189 times. Oh, did you screenshot it? That'd be funny. I counted it. So what did you do when I was calling so much no one else could call you? I think it was like through from the afternoon through the night. Yeah, I know. I was like all day, every day. It was the summer but of 2020. I think I, I'd rather know what's happening than not. You know what I mean? Oh, to- I get that too. That's why I don't yeah, block people too. Sometimes so, I'm like... So I'd rather like be able to get your messages and know what's going on than... In case you have to guard yourself no i guess i have to come and rescue you or something and he Aww. did i know but that's the problem when someone's like a little mentally off like i was i wasn't obviously medicated or getting help at the time like then it's kind of bad because then it's kind of like oh i know you're gonna rescue me so i kept doing like outrageous stuff to get rescued from Aww. like the w hotel where i was just like about to be in like a k-hole and stuff like that and moses came to like rescue me even though he wasn't going to or like when i drove to your house or whatever with the blinding lights i get that song so much from that day I, maybe he wrote that song about me actually because that song i'm blinded by the lights like he told, said what it was about like driving to someone house like a little bit like you know off a little bit and i was like that's exactly what it felt like when i drove to your house i just saw like f- like s- smeared lights so maybe anyways but then you saved me from there too you drove me home peed on the side of the road like you know what i mean you kept saving me so i kept putting myself in dangerous situations to be saved from which is kind of like that's the scary part you know what i mean it's very when bella I'm- coded bella and new moon like oh. when she's jumping off the cliff and like <gasps> Yes. Oh my God. That is very that. Yes, yeah. it is very that. It's very much just save me and I'll do. Wow. Cause, oh, because that's the only way she could see him. Yeah. Oh, it's very much that. Yeah, that was giving. So just so people think I've been obsessed with my husband too. I still am obsessed with you. I still am obsessed with you. But I mean, now it's like I got you so I can be a little. And also I'm more, I'm mentally stable now. I mean, I've <laughs> talked to people and gotten help. But um, but when someone's mentally unstable, it is kind of scary. The obsession, you know what I mean, which is the salt burn of it all. Um, but the weekend one is based off Misery and Misery, Kathy Bates, who's queen icon, love her. She's obsessed with, um, God, what's his name? Ed Harris, Ed Harris, I think his name. He's like a famous writer. She's obsessed. She like traps him like, or she like, 
it's a whole, it's like salt burn. It's like this whole plan. He gets like a flat tire. She like takes him back to her house. Then she keeps him there by like sludging his ankles and stuff like so he can't walk. Like it's wild. She's like upset because she wants him to finish this book. So that's a, supposedly what this is loosely based off. And apparently Abel is playing like the celebrity. And it's like, so I tweeted, I was like, oh, I'd be a great Annie Wilkes because like, but then I deleted it really quick because I thought, then I read that it was based on his life, and I was like, oh, my God, I don't want people to be, like, I don't want him to be scared of me. So <laughs> I was like, let me delete. And then people saw it. I deleted it within two seconds, and people were like, why did you delete? And when you delete something, it makes it, it makes worse. It makes you guilty. <laughs> That's why Moses would tell me if I make sure I delete it. He's like, no, because then it just looks like you're, like, did something wrong. But I did it with the tweet so quick, and then people saw it. But then I found out Jenna Ortega's playing this, the obsessed fan, which I'm not against. I love Jenna Ortega. I just love that the original Misery had, um, you know, how, how are we calling this in 2024? Like, yeah. <laughs> Kathy Bates, me. What is this called? I don't think that's a bad word, but people no. are saying it's bad. So is, is it? Oh, is it big boned? <laughs> <laughs> I like that we had a big boned heroine. Okay, yeah. okay you know what I mean. So I kind of and Jenna Ortega is so beautiful and cute. And I'm sorry when someone's obsessed with someone and you're beautiful. Like it's like the movie. What, it was called Obsessed with Beyonce. Oh yeah, and Allie there was Larder. Yeah, yeah, and like okay, the stalker was beautiful. So it's kind of like giving like of course you would want to like that. She's hot. Why would you be scared of this person? You know what I mean? As opposed to like someone like in Saltburn, like that guy Barry. I guess he's like a heartthrob now, but you know he's kind of creepy looking. So it's like okay, I don't want this person obsessed with me. Same thing with Kathy Bates. Same thing with me. Okay, if I'm the obsessor, but if Jenna Ortega is obsessing over you and stalking you. you you're gonna be like, okay, girl, come in bed. You know what I mean? Like, it's not scary. There's no spookiness. There's no danger to it. You're like, oh my, you know. So, anyways, I'm interested to see it. The guy Barry Knopf or whatever his name is, he's gonna. I don't know who he's gonna play in it, but I, I'm, I'm excited for it, and I can't wait. My friend, who I always talk about, my friend Jeff, who wrote Thanksgiving. He was, like, close to the weekend. What? Yeah. He got – my sister told me this. Can I say this? I don't know. I guess it can. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess. Um, but he, like, would get concert tickets when he, when the weekend was on tour. He would get concert tickets for, like, his friends and stuff like that. And, like, Abel himself would give him these tickets. What? Yeah. I just found out this connection. Uh, my sister told me about it. And I was like, well, that's – anyway, so weird. So full circle. But – um. <sighs> Anyways, I would love to be in the movie. <laughs> I'm having a baby May. I could also be pregnant playing this role, but uh, I'm having the baby May, so if anyone wants to hire me for a movie after that, <laughs> I won't be pregnant at least for another three months after that. So. No, I think we're done. I think we're done at two. I love having kids, but they're a lot of work. You know what I mean? I could have 20 yeah. kids, but. Yeah, every time I, like, babysit, I'm like, oh, like, over Christmas, oh and gosh. I was babysitting my nephew. Like Just one? There was two of them were there, and I was playing with both of them, and then they're, we were building blocks, and oh. one of them was building blocks, the other one's tearing them down. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, it's exhausting. Both boys, so I'm like, oh, oh my no. God. Yeah, it really, it is exhausting. And think that not doing that every day because you have to yeah, like your whole entertain life. them and take them out. And like, I'm so used to just like being at home. I was like, we need to take her out of the house. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. So we like, we'll go to Barnes and Noble. She's young, so it's like, whatever. We'll put her in classes like dancing and tumbling. But um, they're fun. This age now is fun. But yeah, as a baby, it was overwhelming. I was like, that's yeah. why I'm just like, even though now looking back, I'm like, the newborn stage technically was easy. But I think you're just yeah. overwhelmed by a new baby. No, because everyone were telling us, just wait till they start moving. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Once they start moving around, like she was yeah. just... But I love having a lot of kids. I do love having... Like, I like the idea of having a lot of kids. But then did you feel as the fifth... You were the fifth, right? Yeah. Did you feel like you... Well, you were the baby, so you might have gotten a lot of attention. You did get a lot of attention. Yeah, especially because there was such a big age gap. Like, I think the one closest to me in age is... Seven, eight years? Eight oh, years older? Yeah. That so, is big, yeah. Yeah, so I was like really the baby. Oh, so, so they're like, well, we'll just have you. Like, were you spoiled? Yeah, mm. especially in like comparison. Because they were like back to back, those kids, the four. Yeah, they were all like very close in age, and then there was me. So, oh, yeah. right. And, and I think and yeah. they're like half brothers, but like two on my dad's side, two on my mom's side, but still they're like close in it, like a, maybe like one or two years apart. But then so. also when you're that mixed family, then yeah. it's just this whole other thing of like who gets the attention, and then, oh, my mom is now with this person. Yeah. Because we were mixed. I had plenty of blended families and i think i love when they work when they work i think it's beautiful i see it on tiktok and i'm like people are so you know they're always together in family photos but ours never worked it was always just like jealousy and just like that kid got more attention and we were what like whatever it just never it never worked i was always thankful my dad never had kids with his second wife because i was just like it was just messy all the time when we were blended but if it works it obviously worked for you guys or no yeah, okay, I did. Good. Yeah. Okay, good. I love a happy ending. I think I'm so jaded by step parents and stuff because I've had just such awful ones. So I'm like, oh, but I love when I see on TikTok like happy. Like, actually, that's my bonus mom. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's cool. You do kind of remind me. Did you see the stuff with Key and Lolly like over break? I think it was like a week oh, or two ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was like an interesting story. And I was interested to see Ooh. like what you guys thought as parents, you know. Okay. Uh, first of all, okay, yes, okay. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll summarize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to summarize. <laughs> did you so hear about this? The Key and, you know, Key and Lolly? 
No. Oh, from O2L. O2L. <laughs> yeah. I was also no. on their show, the Kian no. and JC Reality House. Oh my God, I forgot about Season Reality one. House. <laughs> I was on it. I see them at the gym, Kian and JC at the gym all the oh, time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, love that. Um, They're very nice. I had a good experience with them. Yeah, so. they seem like pretty, they keep to themselves, I think, and they're yeah. very successful still. So. Right, they seem unproblematic. And- yeah, so um, Kian is a new dad. I forgot how old. Uh, his baby is now but so young i think they just had it like right before halloween yeah but his uh girlfriend or partner i should say and uh was who's also an influencer was sharing like these tiktoks about like her mom life whatever and she was saying she posted this one tiktok where she said she had to like make a deal with kian um that she, that he would watch the baby if she got to go out and like run some errands, right? Well, but, it was an appointment, and she's like, "This was a oh, yes, really hard appointment." And they, you should know too, they're very young, right? They're like in their twenties. Yeah, they're, which, uh, yeah, because he's a couple years younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, late twenties. So late twenties. She yeah. looks very young. Is she younger than him? Maybe like I would say. I think so. Anyways, I don't know, yeah. but they're in their twenties, which to me is young parents these days because everyone's having kids in thirties. But they're in their twenties, and she said that there was this like appointment she really wanted to go to. She's like, it was hard to get this appointment. I really want to go. I'm assuming like a hair appointment or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But she was like, this appointment, she said she's with the baby every day. And so, yeah, she asked Kian. She's like, oh, would she ask him what? Can she watch? Can he yeah, watch the baby? Yeah, to watch the baby. Mm-hmm. And then he like agreed, but then he would get a whole day off and he would get to go to the gym for like a long time or whatever. So basically he was like, yeah, I'll watch it while you're gone. I'll watch the baby while you're gone. But tomorrow I get the whole day off. And she goes, he'll be here. But like, he doesn't want to change diapers or anything or do the feedings. Which what is like wild to even think? I'm like, why would she even put that out there? Because to me, I really do feel like to each their own their parenting style. Like I don't know what the arrangement is. Does he make all the money and so he's working at night because he streams, right? So I'm like, is he streaming 12 hours a day where it's like he's tired? I don't know. I don't know. So I don't like to judge that way, but to put it out there where people are going to judge you because then then they people get mad that they judge. I'm like, well, don't put that out there because people will judge. It is wild to say like. I like to ask your partner to watch your kid. Like, I mean, that is wild yeah. again. It, I, I don't know. I think it's because they're young and it was giving very much like, yeah, I think dads in general get do this a lot where they feel like they – or moms feel like they have to ask the dad to watch because the moms, they are supposed to be the caretakers. Like, they're just supposed to be with the baby 24-7. So it is – I think a lot of dads, when I see on TikTok, I think a lot of dads are just like babysitters. They kind of just like watch the parent, the mom has to say, can you watch the baby or something like that. But it's, to me, the wild part is him to be like the next day to be like, well, I need off for the next day. Yeah. And um, people yeah. started pulling up all these other like TikToks and stuff that she did too. Then all, that's how I saw it. There was like a oh. compilation of like, she's like, I'm the one that plans, every, being the person who plans everything, being the one that plans like all the trips and stuff. And then she was sitting there showing, like, how um, stressed she was, like, planning a vacation or whatever. And then she says – and the dad who just shows up. And then it cut to Kian falling asleep at the airport. Just like – Oh, yeah. So she's kind of setting him up a little bit. So that's what – then there's this whole thing. And it's like a lot of people are saying, well, maybe they do it on purpose, like, rage bait for, like, engagement. Oh. But I'm like, I don't – that's why I was like it, – it was like a weird spiral of, like, okay, what's the truth? Because it is, like, to put all that out there, it's like either – she really like degas, or maybe there's like you know engagement is engagement. I don't know. Maybe she I thinks it's tell. like cute or funny maybe or, she, or relatable. Maybe relatable. Yeah, and that is true because on my TikTok, I just see so many people being like, "The dad is lazy, doesn't help out, doesn't show up to parties." Like you know, he just shows up. I plan all the parties. And like that's crazy to call your partner out because like I have a lot of weaknesses as, as a parent for sure, and I couldn't imagine Moses being like, "Oh, when your wife is like." having a, a mental breakdown and is in bed for four hours or like locked in the bathroom for four hours. And I'm like, that would be crazy to put on social media. I don't know. Again, they're like young. young so yeah. maybe, and I think that in general with people on TikTok, when they complain about like their husbands or be, or dads, it's like, I get it wanting to vent, but then it's like out there forever. I don't know. There's just certain things I feel like maybe you don't need to tell everybody, you yeah. know, it's one thing to be relatable for sure, because it does look like, especially influencers can make things like being, being a parent look so easy. Cause you know, the way you set up shots and everything. So it's like one thing to like, but I think to throw your partner under the bus, is like wild, especially someone like Kian, who kind of is like young, he, he seems young and like immature, just like, I don't know. Cause he twitches or I don't know. To me, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. that's a young, so you, I think already people have that thought in their head of like, oh, well he doesn't contribute. Yeah. And there was one too, where she's posted like her night routine and it was like all her by herself, like in with the baby. And then she like, would there was like one clip of her like checking in um on Kian streaming and like giving him a snack or something but other than that like she spent the whole night like alone or with the baby i saw something else she did that too she's like he streams all night and like sometimes i'll have dinner together but most times she brings him dinner and she's like watching tv by herself and i was like i i can't i guess if it works oh my god if my husband i guess he's making money doing it i guess i don't know 
But if my husband was like streaming all the time while I'm with the babe, I, unless you're like, I guess if you're making money doing it, I, I know, guess. That's I don't like know. That's your whole job. It's, I don't know. It's interesting. Or also, if that's how they met, that's what their life has always been. You know what I mean? She doesn't know anything different. But when you're a that. parent, do you like, do you know what I mean? Like, I guess if that, I guess if it's your job, it's just difficult because it's like, that's your job. I've seen people who just like, they just play video games. That's not their job. Right. They come home from work and play video games. So it's hard to, it's a hard one. Yeah. It seems like he doesn't have the flexibility to adjust or he doesn't want to adjust, but. Usually like you need to make doesn't. adjustments when you have a baby. That at is least for a certain amount of time. That is true. And that is a hard part. And I think as an influencer, as someone who is usually like so like self-absorbed, things revolve around you, all that stuff like that. Like th- you do have to make an adjustment for sure. And I feel like that's giving very not making an adjustment. Yeah. Um, especially to be like uh, the next day I don't want I don't need to do like a feeding, a diaper, <laughs> you know, change a diaper. It takes like two seconds. You know what I mean? It really Yeah. For, for her to like again to throw him under the bus that way it's kind of wild unless she's like signaling something like she's trying to like I know I know? can't tell like I can't it, it could be so many things it could be like her like signaling maybe wanting to like have a change or she is okay with it and it's relatable or she's decaps like she, this, she's fine with her life but she just wants like engagement like doesn't care if people get upset or whatever I don't know <laughs> but I yeah. can't imagine her her rage baiting just cause like no can doesn't seem like a the dramatic type you know like he's yeah they're 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 very very low-key and like just do their yeah they seem kind of yeah yeah i feel like that's not that's not their um image they put out there like they they put out that they're you know this cute couple and they wanted this baby and i think it's just yeah i don't know yeah she must she just must not care and must not think of it as like a bad thing do you know what i mean or as like a fault or something like that but it did get a lot of people upset which i think again it's more like people do it's like me and moses right like they call him like a, a nanny because he like t- takes care of malibu with me and it's like or we're like 50 50 on it there's just like people just expect the mom to be the one 24 hours it's like you know but a, a guy does it it's like oh he's the he's the nanny and I, moses takes care of the baby it's like well he's the dad there should be equal parenting in this you know what i mean it's like yeah it's also that's my choice you know like that's what i want to do like i want to spend that time with her, I could choose to do something else and get in any of that time. Like, that's just what I want to do. Yeah. So I feel like it's just a little misogynistic when people are just like, but it is, it would be annoying to be like, because to me it's annoying too when people like, you know, just assume like, oh, well, if Moses, like let's say he was like, because before we did the podcast, like, you know, he was with her like most of the time and stuff like that. So it's like for people to just be like, oh, he's the nanny and stuff like It's just like, well, if the roles are reversed, people don't think anything of it. It's like nine to five people or like housewives that stay at home. That's why we talk about this a lot. It's like, you know, if the, if the dad goes out and like, you know, makes money or whatever like that and comes home, it's like the mom's there 24 hours and no one says anything. But if the dad's there 24 hours, that's why I liked an Iron Claw, not to go back to Iron Claw, but Zac Efron, there was a point in the movie where he, what was the point that he realized he didn't like want to wrestle? He wanted to be the stay at home dad. Being a full-time dad. Takes away the curse, you know, yeah, because his dad was the curse. It was so was cute, and I love that scene when like Zach Efron goes to pick up or uh, what's his name? What's his name in the movie? Anyways, we'll say Zach Efron. Zach Efron goes to pick up the kids, and then he's making them pasta, and then the wife comes home and she's like exhausted, and it was just such a cute like. I just love it. I feel like that should be depicted more because I just hate with this whole like the women need to be with the baby like 24 hours a day otherwise or whatever and like the dads and that's but but it is annoying too when the dads are like the babysitters when they only have to watch them an hour. I do think it should be like equal. I know with me I work so much now on trying to like make it equal because there was a time when it was like him taking care of her like 90% of the time and me 10% of the time. Granted I was postpartum and like going through a lot too but um, it's just an adjustment and whatever but I think that's why I try not to judge it too much like I said maybe that's her situation. He works at night. He streams. I don't know but she obviously doesn't care because she's saying it and she seems fine with it but i think she said it as kind of like a quirky thing like oh my gosh now it's like it's right was that how it came across i think so yeah i think that was the intent but then like i said there's it's hard when like they don't no one clears up for themselves you know because then like people keep making these deductions and then i think i'm very like when I don't know a lot about a situation, I feel like I hear something. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. That It must be like a rage baiting thing. Oh, that makes sense. She's yeah. just trying to be relatable. You know? It's yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. keep swaying because I don't really know. Well, I hope she's okay. Maybe I, know. I hope it's not like a signaling. Like, look. Because, you know, who? Wow, something else was like that too where it's like, oh, it's someone that we know personally. I thought it was maybe someone, an influencer. But someone we know personally was kind of constantly like letting people hear her argue with her husband, mm. on, whether it's on the phone or him or whatever. And I'm like, maybe she's trying to like set it up so people just know. Not set it up, but just like so people are aware of the situation. Not to say this is the situation. I honestly think they're probably just totally fine and that's their situation and it just when you say stuff it comes across weird my best advice to people and this is someone who like overshared way too much and had cried on the kitchen floor over everything is like you know especially when it comes to relationships like less is kind of more online you know because 
I don't know. When you put one thing out there, then that's all people think of, you know? Yeah. I don't know. No, it's crazy. I mean, you give a little bit. It's like even putting like Malibu out there. We did a couple videos with her for all holidays. And it's her like just like literally just like not eating, not sucking. Just like the toothpaste was in her mouth. And everyone's like, oh, my God, they're feeding their baby toothpaste. It's toxic. And that's what people like ran with. And I was just like, this is wild. Like you'd give them like one little thing and that's it. But that's like in parenting. doesn't matter what you do. People will uh, find something about it. But the thing is. When we, uh, every morning when we brush our teeth, she loves that. She comes, she sits with me, she brushes her teeth. And then I have an empty toothpaste for her to play with, you know. <laughs> so she doesn't understand yet. So sometimes she put the toothpaste in her mouth, sometimes she put the toothbrush. So I give her one that's empty. So it looks, so she's holding it and it looks empty. And people are like, oh my gosh, she's she eating ate, toothpaste. She so just I was like, ate all of this toothpaste. And I'm like, it, what? No, Don't you think she would have some, it. like, make Reaction. a funny yeah. face or, you know. No. But. I think all it's the like comments. The coffee too. Yeah, but all the comments come from people that are kind of. It comes out of hateful and judgment. Yeah, but we haven't so gotten it in so no, long because we haven't put her out there. So we haven't gotten it in so long, but, and then like the minute you do, no, but like, the, the comments are there about other things. But I'm just saying the people oh, really? that make those comments are coming from a certain place where they yeah. just want to be outraged about something yeah. we're doing. I think um, just in general, it's just like yeah, I think with. I don't know, just throwing your partner under the bus for anything. You know, when people, like, complain about – that's all you, like, think about then. You know what I mean? So I don't know. But it seems like they – this couple seems like they're kind of, like, comfortable and they're playing around with this. It seems like – Yeah, they're, like, young. She's like, like, she, she's an influencer. She's TikTok, yeah. Yeah. She was, like, yeah. Logan Paul's assistant or something. Oh, was point. she? Yeah, I oh. read somewhere that – I kind of known about her for a while, but um, they look happy. They look young. They've been doing yeah. podcasts together, and yeah, he I mean, seems happy to be a dad. So he posted, I think, for New Year's or Christmas or something. He like posted like this, a photo with the baby. So oh. yeah. Okay, we did the New Year's resolution. Oh we. Oh, did you see your viral moment over the holidays? No. Oh, people, people dug Oscar. People mm-hmm. dug into oh, your no. past. What? Do you know what it is? <laughs> no. Oh man, you this is. I you thought know? you were on what? the. I thought you were like on the Reddit and the. Yeah. Oh, well, I took a break over a break. You didn't look at any. No. Moses looks at right because I'm. I'm on a strictly. I can't. I can't look at anything right, even if it's good. So he oh, was. Oh, I was just. Took a, I took a reprieve. I'm like, well, if we're on break, I'm gonna really just like. They you know. dug deep. Oh man, this Which, was a good what, one. What they got? This was a good one. I was like. I was shocked. What is it? I was shocked. I was kind of heartbroken for a little Oscar because I was what? like, wow, what you, you really should have been in the tributes, I think. You really should have been. <laughs> we found the video. They found the video of your My Hunger, Hunger Games. Games outfit of the night. Yes. What, was that what you were doing? Because you were kind of running around. I thought maybe it was like a, I don't know, reenacting or no, something. No, you were running. You had the archery. The yeah, you were like, There were do, some trees wait, that, involved. Yeah, and... that wasn't just an outfit <laughs> of the night. That was a full on production. <laughs> That was me. Oh my god! I'm bad. Um, I think it was. I think there's a whole channel that just dedicated to that one video. Yeah, that's it. There's only that one video on there. Oh my god! Oh my god that's it so was funny. so good. You were so dedicated. And I, I was, was like, very Trish coded. I, you were. So what was that? What was that the was me, inspo? That was how I went dressed to go see that first Hunger Games movie at the AMC Aww. at the midnight screening. Uh, I I cosplayed. Okay. So I wanted to like really channel Katniss. Who was um, filming? My friend Alexis was filming. We went to go see the movie together. So, I, <laughs> yeah, um, I did a whole con. I went to the park and I wanted to pretend I was in the woods like Katniss. It made me so sad because I'm like, why were you not in the Joey production videos? <laughs> like, why were you not at least a tribute in there? Oh, I'm like, they, you obviously were such a fan and they're just like, actually, you can't be in this. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> That's wild to me. If I had a friend that was so into that and like cosplay, I'm like, oh, well, they obviously have to be in this. <laughs> like, that's what you just have to do. I don't, did I know them? You definitely knew them. <laughs> definitely. Because what that came out in 2012 was the Hunger Games. 12? Yes. And you were definitely working for Strawberry at like 2012. Oh my God. Yeah. But I don't know if Joey knew me. I mean, I, he I think so, so. saw me hiding in his house, I guess. But. <laughs> That is funny. I yeah. was so sad you weren't part stand. of their big videos. <laughs> I was like, and they did so many cosplay stuff. I was like, wow, you could have been in that. Uh, it's funny. It guess, was great. Maybe, that was a good video. I, yeah, that really was production back in the day. Oh my god! That's did you so put funny. it out with the intention of anything? Like you were trying to maybe get no. noticed by the Hunger Games <laughs> or no? Nothing? I wasn't trying to be cast as like really. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you have been cast in if you could play any role in the Hunger Games oh, movies? That's a good question. This per- this character wasn't really in it, but I I feel like I could be like Peter's like one of Peter's siblings because you know he had a lot oh. of siblings. Is so. he, are they in the movie? 
No, I don't even know okay. if they were in the in the book. <laughs> You're but a I imagine that's not, yeah, seen. <laughs> not written. You're like, I'm not gonna even be I'm visible in the movie. A role, Suzanne Collins. <laughs> like, yeah. Wait, what? That's the role you would take of all of them? <laughs> Who else would I be? I don't know. I mean anybody else, but like someone on screen, maybe. Someone in the movie. <laughs> that's crazy to me. Oh my, oh my god. I don't know who else I would be. I'd be uh Lucy. Lucy Gray. Oh, I loved your audition tape for this. Oh, I was so good. I kind of crushed it. Everyone came for me too. My biggest thing, and I get it, I was a little embarrassed by it, but my biggest thing is when fans will be like, oh my God, she said best in the reaping. It's supposed to be bet in the reaping. I was like, that's like the top comment. I'm like, okay, nerd. Like, stop. Like, okay. I watched it it that night and I did it while Moses was in the bathroom. I was like, okay. I had to learn the words in 10 seconds. So I was like, um, yeah, um, Moses, you can say it. Which part? The Hunger Games <laughs> review of Song oh, I, Snake yeah. and Ballad Birds. I know you didn't like this one. I don't know. I mean, no, she ruined she, the movie for me. It was what? She ruined the movie for oh, me. Oh, that's what my boyfriend said too. <laughs> yeah. I was really? saying. Yes. Okay, because he said it, not me. Her character, the, the way she acted, the acting was over the top. That's I didn't what, buy oh it. God. Her character didn't buy it. The acting There's was. There's no way. I know, she's a theater kid, so I get and, it. But the acting was crazy over the top I right? loved and I'm, it I don't want to come as a hater but like it was over the top I love her I think she's so pretty I love her I think that's no kind play. of the character though she's like a, a cubby girl she's a that's the kind of girl she is but she's I don't a buy theatrical it. Like, yeah I don't I buy don't it either buy it. like she just didn't sell and it and where was the cubby and there was no there. There. that where? girl when? that little blonde girl spoiler alert by the way <laughs> shoot <laughs> <Yeah>. spoiler alert <laughs> There was a blonde girl there. Yes, the Covey was there. If you if you go back to the, she talked so much about the Covey, and I'm like, I didn't see the Covey one when, bit. <laughs> when they're she's performing, the Covey's around. The <laughs> there. Um, oh man, no, I I really wanted to be there. I liked her songs. I liked her singing. I liked her outfit. I liked I don't know, but the coming from someone who's never been in anything, and I want to be in everything. I don't but. know. I. Uh, I'm pro Rachel Zegler. We have to be careful. Brittany Brosty oh. said something bad about Rachel Zegler, Woo! and she Rachel Zegler called her out. Oh, so no, oh, no, no. Should we cut this out? <laughs> she tweeted it. <laughs> no. Rachel Zegler. What did Brittany Brosky say? Can we talk she, about this? I'm scared now. Um, she said that she loved Brittany loved Tom Blythe. But she said that Rachel Zegler was, like, too pretty to be in the Hunger Games or whatever. Oh, you know, okay. And Rachel Zegler, like, she didn't say, call Brittany out by name, but she, like, paraphrased what Brittany said. What did so she say? So everyone knew. She said, I'm more than just, she said, I'm just one of the actresses. And the, and I know something about her face or whatever, And but there's so many people that worked on this movie, blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay, let me come to the defense of Rachel Zegler. So I'm going to play the other side of it, okay? Because okay, that's, that's my real opinion. But maybe that's because I already just have some, like, already whatever. Well, okay. But there is a lot of jealousy that can come into it. So if Brittany Broski says she loves Tom Blythe, right, whatever, yeah. I'm sure there's so many girls that are probably, like, jealous that Rachel Zegler got to be that close to him. Me, me included. Like, right, you see, you watch me. Like, Lily James, I love her. But she was in Iron Claw, and I was just like, damn. Like, she, I'm like, she doesn't, she's too pretty for this role. Like, same thing in my head. I thought that. Because she is so beautiful, but she's supposed to be, they're kind of like these, like, country, like, little, you know, Texas little bumpkins or whatever. And I was just like, she's, she's too pretty. She shouldn't be in this role. Or Zac Efron. You know, they're just too good looking. But with the girls, we're a little more hard on because I think we're, like, a little envious of, like, mm. them getting to be close with the guy. She gets to have these romantic things with Tom Blythe, and she's dating the other guy in the movie and stuff like that. So, I do think there's... I'm not saying Brittany in particular, but just, like, people in general maybe are, like, a little bit meaner to the girls. They'll be like, mm, they weren't as good. Um, oh, someone else could have played her. She's too pretty for it. Where it's like, yeah, you're kind of giving a compliment. Being pretty, and we talked about, who did I talk about this with? Someone was on here. We were talking about the pretty curse. I'm not me. I mean, I'm not saying I have the pretty curse, but sometimes being pretty can take you out of it for sure. I'm not saying Rachel. I think she. I think she. I mean, of course, she's beautiful, but I think um, when you are pretty, it can kind of hinder you a little bit. You know what I mean? Like because people will automatically dislike you, and when someone's really good looking as an actress or an actor, you're just so distracted by their beauty. Like for me, Margot Robbie is like the most beautiful girl in the whole world, and it's like she is a great actress, but. Like, you really see her in, like, sexy roles like Wolf of Wall Street, Barbie. You know what I mean? She kind of has to play that pretty. So when you're getting someone like The Hunger Games, I, I get it. Pretty could be a curse, I feel, because people do look at you and, like, you're just pretty. And, you know, I don't know. Right? So there's, like, jealousy from the girls. They get you with the guy, and they're also jealous that you're pretty. And then they, their way of being nice about it is being like, well, you're too pretty to play that part or something like that. And it's like... I think Madison Beer talked about it on Zach saying too, how she's like, I'm tired of people just like telling me how pretty I am. And then to people who aren't Madison Beer, we're just like, okay, shut up. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, how awful to be so pretty. But I can, I can understand that is like, if that's all you're looked at as someone who's just pretty or you're constantly being told, oh, you're just pretty. That's why you got the role. Like not her acting or singing. Cause like, really Rachel Zegler is, I've always said this, like truly the best singer like ever. Like I've always said that from her YouTube covers, everything like that. So 
Yeah. I think she she's maybe a little bit of the byproduct of misogyny and just people maybe being a little. Yeah. So I can see that, especially when we talk about like, uh, what's his name? Um, Jacob. Jacob Lordy yeah. not liking his role, uh, Robert Pattinson not liking Twilight, and everyone thinking it's cute and quirky because they're hot guys. Yeah. And then the girls do it, and it's like, oh, you're going grateful little bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, But it's like, it, it's the same thing. So, um, yeah, I feel like, yeah, I got to feel for her. I feel like she does get a lot of hate. And I feel like in someone in her position, you think again, it's like Lucy DeLuca or anybody, you know, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you don't need to combat me. I'm just like a little peon over here. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to. For me, if I was Rachel Zegler starring in The Hunger Games and Snow White, I'm literally not going to like waste uh, in, like anything thinking what influencers or podcasters are talking about. It's like, I'm in The Hunger Games, bitch. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you doing? So, but you just have to, I guess that goes to show they're just like human people that like. Totally. Yeah. Feel and some type of way. I feel like it's also different for Rachel Zegler a little bit because like she does have that like youtube background and it's not mm-hmm. like she's like a, a star vehicle you know it's not like she was like tailor made to be a star or whatever like she kind of has an organic like you know yeah story of being discovered and getting her big break and stuff and it's right. all relatively new like within what the past like four or five years yeah so, and just doing big movie after big movie it's like insane yeah, and, west side story and then this and then snow white and so yeah, yeah i think i think she went through a lot 2023 i think 2024 things are looking up or okay. people have like chilled out against her i think okay and she's getting she's like a the face of is it Dior right now? Dior oh my Beauty. God. Huge. The face card on Rachel Zegler is in Gorge. Gorge, she's beautiful. She's the prettiest girl. She's so talented. Yeah. And I stand. I follow her. I you always love. she's the I think I'm like kind of crazy though, because now I feel like I have to like really let her know that I stand. So yeah. she's never gonna see it. But I replied to all like all her Instagram stories. Oh I'm my like, God, I love you, it. Rachel. You killed oh, it. In love the this DMs. interview. Yeah. Oh. She's never gonna see it, never gonna open you it. But I'm know. like, just in case she does, she'll look back and see that like I've supported. You know? I love that so much. And Rachel, if you're watching this, like d- d- most of the girls are hating are jealous. Probably me included. Like I <laughs> wish I could be a freaking singer. Oh my God, do I wish like after I saw that, I just started singing right away. I was like, oh I could play this part. Look at me auditioning for Lucy, Lucy Gray. I like I I <laughs> Like, I, so there is a little bit of that, even in me, you know, right? Like, thinking we're never gonna go out for the same role, clearly, but it's like there's still that little bit of jealousy. And all these people who like all these men in the movie, I get it. And so, Rachel, just know that a lot of people, in this case, probably a lot of people are jealous. Maybe, maybe Moses over there, too, jealous. I got to be so close to Tom Blythe. Exactly. I Did you want to be with role. Snow? <laughs> you know her song? Go sing it. No, I don't remember which one. Um, I was the one who you let see you weeping. I was the soul that you struggled to save. Too bad I'm the bet that you lost in the reaping. What will you do when I go to my grave? Wow, I have chills. Oh my God. <laughs> I really, I got into it. I got into it. So I can think maybe it's a little jealousy. Um, no, it was, um, yeah, I actually really liked it. I liked it more than Moses, actually. So, like, he he was kind of on the fence about it. I actually really liked it. So I'm going to just go. But, yeah, it's just over the top. But, you know, whatever. I actually really liked it. To me, I'm with you. I'm with Catching Fire, number one. And I would say this one yeah. was number two. I really liked it. I liked the singing. I loved, of course, I mean, I'm just going to be the girl here. But I loved Tom Blythe, too. I didn't know who he was, but now I love him. I think that was his first big oh, role, I think. I, that's crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, all these people just kind of, like, breaking out. I love it. I love all these... I was saying this, too, like, I kind of love that the leading men are back. I feel like we had, um, like, girls always have to be hot, but we've always had, like, like I was saying, like, the Paul Rudd and the Seth Rogans of it all, and now I'm kind of like that we have these, like, studs back. <laughs> and I'm including Timothee Chalamet and Tom Blythe and Jeremy Allen White and Zac Efron and what's the other movies we saw? Jacob. Jacob Lordy. I'm kind of oh, on the yeah. Jacob Lordy train, too. I like him. I do. It's oh, hard to that, not. You sound like Lucy. I do. I, I do. I do. The <laughs> Cubby. <laughs> I do like Jacob Elordi. I think I don't know. I'm still very for some reason I'm skeptical. It's hard for me to fully jump on board of Jacob Elordi, but I'm not a hater. I'm kind of neutral. Ooh, I feel like you haven't seen enough of his movies. Like Priscilla, I've only seen him in Kissing Booth okay, and seen part of Euphoria. Oh, you so, don't watch Euphoria? I thought you watched all of Euphoria. I watched a couple episodes of season one, but like I, I, oh, interesting. You know, yeah, I've seen enough. I think it's same, weird. same. Yeah, and I don't like him in that show. But I, we watched Priscilla and Saltburn, and I was like, I get it. He's, I think he's a very good actor. Watch Saltburn. Why you thought he was good in Saltburn? Yeah, I think I think just the casting was not right for him, but he was good in, in what? his character. I think 
Timothy Chalamet would have been better because he's like this European high society, but to me, he looked like an American frat boy. Oh. Wait, no, Timothy so, Chalamet was supposed to be the other one. The but, weird one. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I thought, hey, you I got thought that, that. <laughs> that's the role he should have played. He should have been what? that. Yeah. <laughs> no, because this guy was like the hot, good looking one that the, the guy was obsessed with. Timothy can do that. But all I'm yes. saying is like he, Timothy has the more the European vibe of living in a castle. <laughs> Jacob Lordy is European. He's no, br- he's Australian. No. Oh, well, I mean, he's same. definitely. <laughs> there, he has an accent. I know so that. So at the beginning, I thought it was like a transfer student or something. I didn't think he was. Oh my god! <laughs> it didn't make sense at all. But wait, he was uh, so good. Oh my god! But his, act, his acting was good. But the casting was wrong for to put him there. Oh, my God. That's – wow, what a hot take. <laughs> I think his casting was really good. But that's just me. I loved it. God, you got to watch – well, you watched it. You didn't care about it. It was so good. I like the discourse around it. I think it's funny. Like, I love everyone talking about <laughs> the bad tub scene and, you know, the To me, end. that wasn't even that shocking. Everyone was talking about it before we saw it. I, I was know. like, oh. I saw the scene and I was like, okay. okay like, he just, like, drank some of his water. Yeah. And I, I thought like, the <laughs> vampire scene was more shocking than that that no one's talking about. I was like, Ugh. And, like, the candle thing with the bathtub scene is also, like, really interesting to me. Have you seen like the Etsy candle. I tried to out. order one before the show or to get it here, but I wasn't gonna get it here in time. Yeah, it's well, what's it's kind of just random sense though. It's not like I wish. I mean, how could you like scientifically, I guess, like figure out what Jacob Lordy's bathtubs? Well, I would think it's like, like silly, right? <laughs> it's but it's like a vanilla or like ocean breeze. I'm like, oh, it is. Yeah, it would be funny if it was like the Gwyneth Paltrow candle where it had a it, little bit of stench yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would have been more. Probably more people would have liked that. That's for what sure. I'm saying. I'd be. I feel like that would make me buy it more. But was he? Gay in like, the movie? I don't think so, right? But he drank the bathwater, so he's kind of like, mm, mm, mm. I watched him do all it, that. Wasn't he also into a girl, though? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe bye. Okay. Who knows? And the other guy, too, the other friend that was there, um, I, forgot, I forgot his name, and the thing, yeah, but he was on top of him. Yeah, I mean, they portrayed him as as being gay at the beginning, but it seems like he's just a psychopath. Like, yeah. he'll do anything to any direction. To maybe he just, like, wanted to be that guy or something. Like, he know. just doesn't have. It's, it's more about power. It was so good. I just love a movie about obsession. I just love it because I get it. I get it. I was saying this too. I was like, I get it. Like he like lied, okay? But like you want to impress people. What else are you supposed to do when you're like not impressive, you know? You got to <laughs> lie about it. So I totally got it. The schlong was but- impressive. Oh my God. That- <laughs> Wait, did they show it? Yeah. <laughs> What? Did I miss it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wait, yeah, when? You... At the end. When he's dancing? Yeah. Oh, I don't even remember it. How could you miss it? Oh, my God. Okay, well, that, think, you paid attention to I think she wasn't really looking at that moment because it was like the movie was kind of over. <laughs> yeah, it was like that last. I Wait, think really? I know. I really don't remember this. I always noticed that. That's so, what? Yeah. That was impressive, though. Yeah, and he, like, was very proud that he didn't use a prosthetic. Like, that. it was all oh, authentic. Okay. Barry. Wow. They made a reference early in the movie to that, too. was like, wow, plot twist. Like, you know, when he took his pants off the first time. So I was like, okay, well. Barry's packing a little bit, Maybe he should start to OF. (laughs) He's kind of, everyone's kind of thirsting after him right now. He's kind of. Yeah. I guess that there is something about, what is it? Like, I guess you're kind of into it, too, I guess. Like, remember when, like, Evan Peters, when he was Dahmer, everyone was obsessed with Evan I was not into that. But then, like, you, and then Penn Badgley, season three, you was after, and then everyone was into Penn Badgley. Okay, that's different. That's, like, more romanticized. The Jeffrey Dahmer one I don't get. I'm like, Yeah, the real one, I know. Everyone who was, like, into with the glasses and everything, I was like, no, no, no. No, no, no. That's but weird. But Penn Badgley with kind you. of like yeah. a, a character who's a little... A little off. Yeah. I like the obsession of it all. I <laughs> loved Saltburn. I loved Iron Claw. Those are my two favorite. Wonka, we said in break that it was really good, too. Oh, yes. Too. Loved Wonka. Well, also, it was cute. random aside, Margot Robbie also producing Saltburn is wild. So she had Barbie and oh Saltburn. Oh, my God. Take care for Margot. Go that's off. amazing. See, that's more than just a pretty face. Yeah. And I think Rachel Zegler is more than a pretty face, too. But I do get the pretty I get the pretty curse. I mean, I, yeah. again, I wish I can have that. But, um, yeah, I think it's... I just swore. Oh my god, bleep that! Why did I swear? <laughs> you bought your Patreon all this time. Oh my god, <laughs> Patreon, watch out! Oh my god, that was wild. Oh god, sometimes when I swear, I'm like, who am I? That was so weird. Um, but yeah, Wonka was cute. It was Wonka a good was movie. very. I wasn't expecting to like Wonka, but I came out kicking my little feet. Me I was too. dancing. Noodle, noodle, noodle apple strudel. Some, some people don't, and some people do. I've been seeing that all over. I'm like, I wonder if Moses knows what it is because he didn't come see Wonka with me. I went with my mom, so I'm like, he probably is like, what is that song? Or the chocolate? Uh, there's chocolate, and, and there's chocolate. chocolate. 
Well, Only one well, good thing about this soccer yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Keegan Michael Keto. I really want him on the podcast. I think he's like so underrated. I just love him so much. I love him on Key and Peel. I love him in what do we see? Reboot, Schmigadoon. Like he's on all these really good shows that I feel like don't get their like notoriety. And he's so good. And he was so good in Wonka. That little girl was so good. Yeah, uh, Noodle. Yes. I love him. I have a third kid. Maybe we'll get the kid Noodle. Noodle. Noodle's so cute. Yes, you gotta get her the little N necklace. Yeah. Oh my god. The Z that was an N. I love that. That was so good. I love I just thought it was a feel good movie. It was the same lot that they shot Barbie in. Yeah, Timothy, Timothy said it was shot. They yes. were shutting it down. And it was going. So I was like, why weren't you in the movie then? Like you, you were already made there. That cameo. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of weird. Mm. Anyways, that would have been good. But Wonka was so good. That was the first one we saw over break, and I just love a good movie. Yeah, it's a perfect holiday film. Yes, mm-hmm. that one would just feel good. We came home and we're like, this is the best movie ever. I want Moses to see it. When we would have streamed so I'll like watch it because it's so, so good. It I was, was on the elliptical and I was listening to oh. that with the Wonka song. Oh, wow. and the song. And then, you know, it picks up when everyone's trying this chocolate and oh, it, yeah. it speeds up. I was like, <gasps> mm. I was really into it. Oh my God, I love that motivated you at the gym. Yeah. The chocolate yeah. just looked good too. I just, oh God, I love chocolate. All the cho- little chocolates he was making, I was like, mm. Mm, that looks good. Oh, Hugh Grant as the Oompa Loompa was so good too. Oh, yeah. I love him. He's such a star. I went in expecting to be a hater, and I was pleasantly surprised. Oh, wow. Yeah. You did go in. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved all the movies. I've been such a movie person lately. Like, we went to go see Iron Claw in the theater, but I had really bad stomach problems at the beginning. Oh, my God. Can I just tell you, the absolute worst time to approach anyone for a picture or a hello is when they are in the bathroom for a long period of oh, time. No. I had the worst stomach problems. I went out twice at the very beginning of the movie and each time I went out, it was like another movie was getting out. So there was like so many people in the bathroom. I barely made it to the bathroom and people just like stopped to take like a picture or like talk to you. And then there's some people that wait. So you're like, I was in the bathroom for quite some time, like 10 minutes and they just like wait and I'm just like sweating. I'm just like, there's just bullets coming down my face. I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I'm trying to go back to the theater so I can watch the movie, but my stomach's still like just ripping apart. And I'm just like, and they're in the bathroom asking for a picture. I'm like, this could not be the worst time to get recognized or ask someone for a picture. I was so beside myself. I looked so ugly. I was like sweating. I was pale. And I was like, I did take a picture. There, I almost said no because I was like, we are in the bathroom and I am just like about to just die from the inside out. And I just, but then I mean, it happened again, no. huh? I mean, I would say not in the bathroom. Yeah, like, can we go outside? <laughs> yeah. But then there was people waiting outside and I streamed. I like rushed past because I was like, I cannot be doing this because my stomach still hurt. And I was like, do I have to go back in? But I wanted to go back to the theater. And then I had to go back a second time because my stomach was, we had a mac and cheese. We had like a three cheese mac and cheese. That was wild. And, um... So I just like rushed Is past them. Is that the one them. you cooked? Huh? Uh, yeah. It was good. It was so good. I ate it. I liked it. But I do think I have a little weird aversion to cheese maybe. It was just a lot of cheese. It was uh, – God, I did it right before the movies too. And I and I did that so I wouldn't eat the popcorn cheese – or the nacho cheese because that makes me sick. So I was like, I'm going to eat the nacho cheese. And that made me worse anyway. So I missed the first 20 minutes of Iron Claw. But he said I didn't miss much of it. So the rest of the movie was amazing. And I wanted to see this movie so bad. And there's Moses just sitting there by himself. And every time I come back, he's like, are you okay? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to go back, but then I kept eating the popcorn and the chocolate pretzels. I probably just should have stopped. And I know I don't like to talk about that kind of stuff, but just maybe don't in the bathroom <laughs> ever go up. Just, I can't. I was just so mortified, and I get it. But at the same time, you know where I'm at. Just like wait outside or something. You know what I mean? Oh, that was that was wild. So sometimes if I'm in a weird mood, it might be because my stomach is shredding inside. <laughs> Anyways, that was that was that. People waiting in line for the Stanley Cups at Target has been like such a hot topic. Oh, yeah. That every, it's tearing the internet apart. And I thought I, we were boycotting Target. Or no, we're boycotting Starbucks. Starbucks, yeah. yeah. Wait, oh, but you're talking about the Stanley Cup. Is that yeah. Starbucks related? I think it's the Stanley Cup is a Target Starbucks cup. So boycott it. Just focusing on the Stanley aspect. I guess because it's pink. I'm like, oh, I guess people <laughs> like a pink cup yeah but it was there was so much controversy over it because people were, were like waiting in line like overnight to buy them and then that's crazy and then they're reselling for like 300 oh they're doing it for reselling some people are scalping okay. them i guess i get the reselling again i don't know anyone's hustle you gotta make some money <laughs> yeah. so i guess if you're doing it to like hustle the hustle of it all then i think that's okay at first i was like you guys are crazy like what would it's stanley cup like relax but yeah there's so there's target has like a valentine's day one and then there's also like that hot pink Starbucks, I don't know, whatever. So there's two separate Stanley crazes going on right now. But I will say, it might be a hot take, but I'm kind of like, if people want to wait in line and buy Stanley, like, why do we? Why do they have to be like, you know, made fun of for it? Like, because they're losers. Like, don't you have something else to do with your life? (laughs) No. Okay. 
think about it. Like, I could everyone... never waste time in my life standing two hours for anything. Like, nothing. Didn't you used to wait outside Michael Jackson's when house? When I had or... no life and I was a loser. <laughs> Up until I was 32 years old, I was that loser standing <laughs> waiting outside for people. No. But y'all need to chill. I guess if it's a person, a celebrity, okay, but it's a Stanley Cup. It's like... I think there's something... What do you mean? You go to like you would go to when uh, McDonald's has a friggin' a new toy or something. Or... I go to three McDonald's <laughs> takes me an hour. Okay, okay, maybe, See, but that's, that's work. What that's work. That's what I'm saying. If you're gonna hustle it and I you're making know. money, okay, fine. I respect it. I feel it. like everyone has their thing that they get excited about and are willing to like wait for. You're gonna wait in line for something. I've done it before. For like what? I've done it for like. Uh, a record store day like they have an exclusive like taylor swift record that's like limited edition that's wild to me because like and you're I gonna be able to get it later no because it's like limited quantities like, and it's only one day it's available so like you have to you know be one of the first like 20 or so people mm. to get it so i have and then my boyfriend was sitting there dragging the people who wait in line for tic- for these stanleys on tiktok I like and i was boyfriend. like i love it he's just dragging he, everybody i know <laughs> he, everyone's catching strays with him but i'm like okay and then i flipped it i was like didn't you like you're obsessed with like apple products like you love apple products little i just seen stan oh my um, gosh okay love that <laughs> have you ever met an i just seen stan i never have but i guess <laughs> yeah, but i mean i know they are out there yeah. i guess your boyfriend's one you of them lost. but i'm like okay you love apple products like you every time there's an iphone new iphone you go out and get it he's like well it's different it's like does he wait in line for it well there was one time he did and i was like well He's like, I wouldn't wait in line for it. I was like, last year, didn't you wait in line for it? He's like, well, well, yeah, I just wanted to experience waiting in line for a product. And I was like, okay, period. So you're dragging these people who, for them, Stanley is like, a cup is exciting for them and they love it and they want to collect it. And, you know, that's not for me. (sighs) I wouldn't do that. But, you know, they want to. And, like, for you, it's an, an iPhone. For someone else, it's like, you know, people love Funko Pops, like. Again, not my thing. People yeah. collect them and go crazy for them. Yeah, okay, I get it. Everyone so, has their thing, their I think. Their passion. That, yeah, that's I how it. I see it, you know. All right, I'll flip. I guess if that brings you joy in life. Maybe you're so depressed and you just hate your miserable life and you're like, I'm going to do this for my little <laughs> oh, bit of happiness. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> or maybe like you just like a stick. <laughs> Brings you joy. I love that. You've been, maybe your life was miserable. And like, yeah. You yeah. Okay, and like, you're not loser. You're just miserable. <laughs> and that one little cup's gonna make you happy. You get that rush. I get it. I get it. I'm there for it. All right. Um, I'm gonna switch it. I do agree too. When people like comment on that, I'm like, oh my god. You're like, I mean, granted, that's like what we do. But again, it's like we're making money doing this. But I mean, when people always have something to say and like they're just talking to the abyss or something like that, and it's like, does that really help anything to like make fun of these people? And not to also, I always bring it back, but like I do think it's interesting that like like I said, the Funko Pop guys. It's a lot of like that's a very male, you know, collecting. Like base, I guess. Right. But then the Stanley Cup, it's a pink Stanley Cup. It's all women waiting in line, you right, know. Right, right. There's this, you know, young girl making the tech talk of her waiting overnight. And that's I the think one. that's also the thing to look at. Like with the age range we're talking, like that, like, you know, who's standing in line not to like really judge, but it's like young girls making TikTok, whatever. But yeah. So I think there's, you know, different layers to it. I think it seems very silly to a lot of people, and I'm sure it is. But like for video games, there's a lot of guys who, you know, yeah. remember back in the day where like um, before, like, ordering online was a thing oh, you had yeah. to like go to the store and wait and get oh. a ticket to go to walmart people wait in but line that was for... back in the day that's what i'm saying it's back in the day i like, know but you know... these aren't online like you can't get them online you have to get them at the store um yeah i guess i guess yeah if it makes people happy then i'm there that's for it I'm yeah I'm like you know it's not for me but it's for someone like why do you have to hate on it yeah you don't have to hate on it but a little bit of advice is like don't waste your life standing in line for a stanley cup you know if it makes you happy fine but you're wasting some life you're wasting some valuable yeah life. but it's like okay i saw like every day of your life you're gonna have a grand adventure and like you know well, do something crazy maybe it's like, better than just standing in line or like then you're just like being at home bored you know then like why not go yeah, that's for true. Stanley Cup. i go back and forth with it i get <laughs> I it i get it. i know i'm like i get it but also like don't do that because <laughs> it's just a waste of time but could you imagine if i'm like, i want to stay in line for two hours Stanley Cup. actually you'd probably be fine with you like whatever <laughs> be like watch the baby for me no diaper duty tomorrow <laughs> as long as i get to go to the gym the next day for two hours too. <laughs> good call you back. know what i always tell most i'm like because i'll go i went to wonka with my mom so i'm like do you want go like have lunch with your friends because he has like other friends that he hasn't seen since like the wedding I'm like you have lunch like I can be with Malibu by myself I don't know if you're like scared for me to be with her by myself but he never wants to go out I'm like going out for me going out is going out with you and Malibu and going out oh. with her and we were asking about like glam today too that you'd like to go out <laughs> with do. me like it's not um yeah it's not the phase of hanging out with your boys you know what I mean like we also talk about Snapchat using me 
Did you see oh, this? Oh, I saw you added them to the <laughs> to the folder. And oh, then, yeah. okay. Did you get a notification? Yeah. I was like, let me just put this in there. Um, first of all, Snapchat, stop. Just stop posting my Just Trish. Stop. I don't know what it is. Like, there's like news reels. I don't use Snapchat. I'm kicked off of it or whatever like that. But they did a, a clickbait using me, and it's like a, a crying face. And the quote is Trish. Forced to sell car to afford baby Elvis. I'm like, are you the National Enquirer? Like, why are you putting this headline? Like, you're so weird. And these are for, like, little kids on your Snapchat. And this is where you pay influencers to do, like, weird, grotesque, like, sexual pictures so people click through or that other people pretend that they're pregnant. And you're, like, rewarding these people. Snapchat is sick and twisted, and I don't like it. And I'm so tired of them using me. I swear I'm going to sue them. I swear I'm going to sue them. I don't know how. But, like, that headline and stuff like that. I was going like, to say, like, aren't you able to do – I mean, that's – slander like literally literally <laughs> slander yeah, libel it's like a lot of things yeah so. using me to like monetize and shit like that when i'm not even allowed on your platform i'm like don't can you use my shit i'm gonna bleep me out and I'm, oh my god <laughs> who am i I have so many swearing today but it makes me so <laughs> mad someone tweeted it to me and i was just like oh my god that was so annoying like i just hate snapchat they've been doing it for a while so they know you're banned how any content that's yours allowed yeah, people you know have, I mean? have like, started nobody, pages. Nobody should be able to monetize your content if your content is not allowed on the yeah. platform. Yeah, hey, so, I'm, I'm so really thinking about it. So if they can it. flag you easily, the way can they flag any of that? And Lots of take a lot of work, but I could maybe for Snapchat. I'll because, testify. Thank you. I'll be like, <laughs> I'll be slandered. Just be like, I have to sell my car to afford my As baby. As a journalist, I know my client's rights. And I, and I <laughs> you know. know the legal grounds of journalism. Yes, I did take a, I did take a journalism law <laughs> Not class. Not the flip of the <laughs> Yeah, my wizard wig. That's a good callback to you. Um, <laughs> That let's, was go fun. Let's, let's go to do court. Let's go to court. Let's go. I'm so annoyed. I was at first. I was like, Snapchat, please let me in. And now I'm like, Snapchat, you're weird. Like you're just so weird. Uh, the whole clickbait of it all. I've seen people using like sexual images and stuff, and it's supposed to be for kids, but they like literally use sexual images to get people to click through the story. And I'm like, but you're gonna ban me off of it, or you're gonna like let people like clickbait pregnancy when they're not pregnant and like you're weird that's what you're promoting is fake pregnancies or belly sticking out like you're weird snapchat and they're the ones i've had it with <laughs> i knew that was coming i knew it's kind I of catchy had it that i've had it girls they're kind of like you it know, i've had it with i've had it with i was like okay <laughs> i'm here for it mm. oh my god wait the other one i have to talk about too this is so random this is not even hot topics these are just like podcast <laughs> topics but did you see the washcloth debate no did you see this one? No. Oh, I'm surprised because these are your – well, I don't know. You knew these people. I didn't know these Where people before Moses. It's the Your Mom's Basement or something. Oh, yeah. It's Tom What's his Segura? name? Tom Segura. I think it's his uh, wife in it. Do you know them? Yeah. I'm not really – No, I thought you were talking about the, the – what is it? The, ba- the basement yard? The basement Who's that? Yard? Who's that one? The hot guys? Definitely these are not the hot guys. <laughs> I mean, they're good looking enough. I'm not – whatever. They're fine. Oh. But they're like a middle-aged couple that has – but they're oh. like popular because why? He's friends with Joe Rogan or something. Yeah, I okay. mean, he's a comedian, successful comedian. Okay, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't know and the whole thing. I'm hoping this was a bear rage baiting. I think this is, okay, I'm very famously known for needing washcloths. In my celebrity big brother days, I cried because oh, there was yeah. no washcloths. And I was like, I would just like a washcloth because I need to, like, how are you supposed to, wa- do you use a washcloth? I use like a loofah. Okay, you yeah. use something. Yeah. How are you not, how are you supposed to get clean in your crevices without a washcloth? Their debate on this, sh- there was, first of all, the first thing they said was washcloths are for for, for poor people. What? Yeah. He's like, I went to my poor friend's house. That's what he said. I went to my poor friend's house. And he's like, here's a towel. And then there was a little towel. He's like, what's this little towel? He's like, it's a washcloth. He's like, take it back. Like, he didn't want it. He's like, I'm like, first of all, calling his friend poor, whatever. And they said it was for poor people. And, oh, he said he crashed at a poor friend's house. And then the the woman, the wife, was like, use your hand, dummy. Like, because someone wanted a washcloth when they're at the house. And she used it. So I'm like, are they, is this a bit? Which I'm like, this is like, kind of like, not a funny bit. And also like, why is it for poor people? Wouldn't using your hand be poor because you can't afford a washcloth? Like, that's what I don't understand. I was just like, this is the weirdest rage bait if this is a rage bait or this is a weird conversation. Right? Yeah. Like, if you're if you're poor, you can't afford a washcloth. So why is washcloths for four people? Yeah, because isn't that better than having nothing? Because you technically are affording some... That is the... That may, it's not even logical, though. I mean, you know their sense of humor. You think it was being a joke? I don't really get it. Because you, you know them, kind <laughs> I of. I need to watch it. I mean, it sounds it sounds like... Yeah, I mean, usually they kind of, like, rage bait or try to... Oh, go, you think it was a spark. Try to be funny in in that way you know like saying that there's a joke in general oh that's like poor people thing saying something so polarizing i guess like but, i think like anyways like punching down on like people like just calling poor people poor people like or oh, i crashed my poor friend's house i'm like but in a way it's weird because it doesn't make sense because like you said to have something is usually not to be yeah you know, so like usually people can't afford to have something i'm so like y'all nasty not washing hands 
Yeah, wash with a washcloth. Like what? It's or a loofah or something. Yeah. Don't put your hands. You're putting your hands in your holes and your cracks and your crevices. You're <laughs> disgusting. Especially like fe- like the female. You're just what you're scrubbing up in there with your hands. Like whoa. Uh. Your fingernails are getting all that. Like you're not scr- like that's to me that's weird. I was like I don't know. There was all over my Twitter. I just kept seeing it and people were tagging me because I love a washcloth and I'm just like I need a washcloth. When I was like, give me a washcloth. I think the British people call it flannels. I think they call it a flannel. Either way, they didn't have them in the Big Brother house. I'm like that's nasty. No one's using washcloths. Y'all, but to call they had for- to use their hands. Everyone. I guess. Oh. I asked for one. I was like, I need a washcloth, and they gave me one. Oh. But yeah, I guess everyone was using their hands, which I think is so disgusting. But it was such a weird, a weird thing. And I was like, I, I didn't. I know. I knew of them kind of because you told me about them, but I didn't know. Like, I don't really know them. But I think Dr. Drew has a show with them or yeah. something. <laughs> Anyways, we love Dr. Drew. Maybe we love them. I don't know, but. People in Texas are weird. They're all in Texas, right? Be well, weird. they just moved there, so they're not. <laughs> well, strange. <laughs> Texas people. Anyways, it made me upset. It rage baited me. I was very upset about it, and I was just like, washcloths are not for poor people, okay? And also, things for poor people are fine, okay? You know what I mean? Like, I, I shop at Target for my clothes. I shop at Fashion Nova for expensive. my clothes. Yeah, actually, kind of. Did you? Now. I saw this TikTok, very Trish, very Trish core actually. Oh, okay. Trish it, where it was like, did you see the new trend at Target is like pink disco? Yes. yes and the squares are everywhere at <laughs> yes. Target and I've been like kind of refusing to buy them we have the booties and there's like a sweater I'm refusing to buy because I'm like wait our merch is coming out and we have this and they're like fuzzy squares I'm like mm, and the disco balls everywhere and it's all very oh, expensive this is this was from Target you said right I just got it this morning oh my yeah, god I just got this pillow from, from there this oh morning oh my god. even for Christmas they had a lot of disco stuff yeah the yeah, ornaments and stuff like very that very suspicious Suing Target too. Add it to the list. <laughs> but they have little like pink disco decor, which looks like it's like a dollar. It's like ten bucks, like these little things. No, it's definitely not expensive. expensive. No, for sure, that's true. Mm-hmm. Like seriously, like who makes cheap stuff anymore? Like even Walmart's not cheap. Hard. The Paris yeah. Hilton collection's expensive. We were talking about that. That's expensive there. Mm-hmm. Like everything, not it. Um, Ellie May, also producer, wants to know about aliens in Miami. Oh, I was reading about that too. It was like. Eight to ten foot tall aliens recorded in Florida. That, I believe it. That is my Twitter. That's all my Twitter. Really? Oh, we didn't. We didn't even discuss this. What are you? Yeah. Are you here for it? I know. I mean, I keep seeing accounts. People talk about what happened, but I haven't seen yet the video of those. But right, where's that video? I heard a lot of stories. Like, I believe it, especially in Florida. It's really if interesting. They're going to be anywhere. It's they're going to be Florida. Sure. Remember when we clickbaited me and the aliens like the third episode? I was like, what an interesting title you chose. <laughs> Not hating it, but I was like, wow. Well, well it's, around that time, I remember your alien boyfriend TikToks were picking up. Like my old ones. <laughs> yes, it was like a big thing at the time. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah, that I love was it. that was a time for sure. Oh, I even aliens i think they're so real but there's a shift now like people don't call them aliens anymore like they don't think oh it's that offensive no they just don't think those entities are not from here yeah so they're aliens if they're not from someplace they're aliens no that's what they're saying they've been here for a long time oh they're the natives oh. they're from here oh interesting oh, wow. so a lot of people don't call them aliens anymore okay oh, love that, maybe I we're guess. taking over their space it's more of a so we're the aliens they're, yeah it's more spiritual you think they look like i think they look like the aliens we see like with the silver Shaved heads. I guess so, because where else would we get that from if it didn't come from mm-hmm. somewhere? You know. Yeah, someone definitely saw them for sure. Yeah. Um, Layla Layla Manuel, our producer too, also wants to know. We did the 2024 pop culture predictions last year. Do you have any new ones since the new year has started? This is going to be Ariana Grande's year for sure. That's kind of like an easy oh. prediction because yes, we have the and. album. Yes, yeah, and. she's <laughs> for sure. Her in the weekend for sure because he has a new album coming out too. Yeah. So I think they're both gonna maybe they're gonna collab again. They're they gonna should do collab it. again. But uh, it's Ariana's year with Wicked. Yes. So, yeah. And oh my god, I keep yes I can't and help yes, yes and, and. and Ethan Slater kind of looks like um, Jeremy Allen White. Like they kind of have the oh. same vibe, <laughs> right? When I was watching Iron Claw, I was like, oh, Ethan Slater could play this role. Jamie Allen White, sweetie, I am so sorry. Wait, are really? you serious? Wait, what? First of all, Ethan Slater is not bad looking. I think people are just so angry. He's not bad looking. People really become... What? I saw this one tweet that was like, Ariana always looks like her boyfriend, the, her boyfriends that she's dating at the time. Oh, she which morphs into them? True. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's normal. Um, Listen... Love is love. So if that's when oh Ariana's into I mean, I don't know. Gosh. What am I supposed to say? I can't lie. I can't lie. He is good looking. I can't lie. Oh my God. <laughs> Y'all are wild. You're the double standard. You're like defend everybody else, but not Ethan Slater. I think he's good looking. I don't think he's as guy as ripped as Jeremy Allen White, like an Iron Claws. Like, oh, he probably can't play that. But I feel like I have an excuse because of the stuff with his ex wife and the baby. 
So I feel like it I have makes an excuse ugly. to be a, a... I don't know if it makes him ugly. It doesn't help, but... I think it makes someone unattractive when that happens. Yes. Because he is good looking, but yeah, then you're like... Okay, I don't think he's ugly. I think he's unhandsome. Hey, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> but did you see Ariana? I love Ariana. She's never coming on the show, so it doesn't matter. But it's like, I did you see her be like, oh, there was a lot of like rumors yes. and uh, misunderstandings. She, her whole 2023 um, year end manifesto. Yeah, she's never coming, so whatever. I was going to say, it was kind of... <laughs> It was a little like Colleen Ballinger coded. Like that's kind of what it reminded oh me of. Oh my god! I was like, let's have a little bit of self awareness. I mean, yeah, it's so frustrating. Yeah, and again, love Ariana Down. Like we will be streaming. Same. Yes, and Stand like wicked, very excited it. about it. Um, but I think like real friends would call someone out on this. Be like, because we were talking about this. Like people, you have to like me too. It's like if they're not, you have to be held accountable. Like, you have to like have some acknowledgement or no acknowledgement at all is better than. Gaslighting. Yeah. She said, I have never felt more pride or joy or love while simultaneously feeling so deeply misunderstood by people who don't know me, who peace whispers together and make what they want out of my life. I'm reacting to things that deserve my energy only and removing and protecting myself from things that do not. I think Ariana has a very good heart and I think mm-hmm. her intentions are good. I think she's very sweet. So like, I've never heard... She has, like, a little bit of a diva reputation because she likes one side of her face. But other than that, like, I have never heard anything, like, <laughs> yeah. whenever she does, like, anything with, like, cast and crew or whatever, she's always very, very, very kind to everyone on every set that she's And ever fans, on. too. She signs a lot for them yes. in New York and stuff. Yeah. She's very, very caring, very sweet. And I think to her, she thinks, you know, I'm following my heart. Like, I love, you know, who I love, you know. And I think – so I think to her, she hasn't done anything wrong at all. Hmm. And maybe it's true. Maybe it's like things were already done with like, or maybe he told her that. Maybe Ethan told her, hey, like, hey, look, I'm mm-hmm. going to divorce her. Like, it's we're miserable. Like, we're not going to work out, blah, blah, blah. So mm-hmm. maybe to her, she doesn't think she did anything wrong at all. But I think I think you're right. Like, maybe just don't mention it at all. Because even if it's true, like he did tell you, like you didn't know or whatever, like yeah. you still, the optics aren't great of that whole situation. Yeah, you people, know? the wife itself was like, you use my family as collateral. So That's everyone's the thing. like, hey. Yeah, like, if the wife didn't say, like, didn't speak out against, like, Ariana's relationship with Ethan, yeah. then things could be a little bit different or it could be, you know, it mm-hmm. could be just loose gossip. And there is some, like, there's a lot of untruths to, like, the narrative around Ariana, but there is some truth. Like, you know. Of course. <laughs> I mean, the situation is that. He has you a young like baby, baby at photos, home. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like no, it's it's heartbreaking. That is yeah. heartbreaking, and like you said, it's like at this point, good. Like live your life. You guys made this decision, but yeah, maybe don't acknowledge it or have to say like piece together whispers. It's like these aren't whispers; these are some loud ass like the ex wife yeah. being like home wrecked. <laughs> I am interested to see what she has to say in the album because you know she can't yeah. not say no. it, talk about this stuff. You know, so oh my god, yeah, yikes! I mean, love Ariana again. I mean, but that's where pretty privilege works. I'm like, you know, she's pretty, <laughs> so I love her. Yeah. <laughs> so she's, yeah. And, I don't know. Like, it's hard because I do love her. Well, like, problematic fave, I guess. Like Problematic fave is a good yeah, one, yeah. You know. I like all, that. All our faves have a little bit of uh, problematicness. Yeah. But don't call me your problematic fave because I'm not problematic anymore. <laughs> I hate when people like, um, they always preface. I saw someone being like, say what you will about Trisha. And there's a lot to say. But honestly, I was like, don't have to preface everything with something that happened 10 years ago. I'm so over that. Let's leave that, okay? It's 2024. I'm 36 years old. I was like, okay. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Who are we apologizing to? My apologies to Rachel Zegler, Lucy DeLuca, and Ethan Slater for my co-host, Slight. I'm not sorry, Ethan. Sorry. <laughs> not, sorry, I'm not sorry. Not sorry, not sorry. That's our next one. Demi Lovato. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. All right, guys. So we're going to have a little cake mukbang over on our Patreon, which is really fun. We did a Wendy's one last time, and it becomes really casual to the point where Moses, we were like, okay, now we're going to do the extended podcast. He's like, what did we just do? We're like, we did a mukbang where we're just being <laughs> casual. The extended podcast is more like this, where we're like, we always give you like an hour. Do we have some good topics? Do we have some juicy topics for the extended podcast? I think so. Any teasers? I was on the fence about this one because we said we weren't going to talk about her anymore, but Colleen was so annoying that I feel like I have to talk about that her one, again. It uh, just makes me upset. I know. So so much. And not th- not the talking about her, but the, the stuff that she said. I was like, wow. Like, again, it's something I don't like to give attention to on this main platform because we're popping over here. Not that we're not popping over Patreon, but, but we Patreon. can be a little bit. It's just friends. Close friends. So we can be a little bit. Close friend story close only. Friends. Yeah. And also. It's not even petty. It's like wild. I'm that's just, true. Yeah. Anyways. And uh, the top uh, oh. paid TikTokers, the top 10 paid TikTokers of 2024. Oh, okay. Gee. Yeah. I don't know that's some good... unexpected names on there, oh, too. Oh, okay. Definitely uh, not me. <laughs> I am not on that list of paid TikTokers. I don't know how you guys are getting paid on there, but I salute you. Oh, also. Yeah. 
who my my celebrity crush. I guess we'll talk about it over oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the cliffhanger. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll talk about maybe we can collab more too over oh, there. Oh yeah, we have because that was a pop the Oh my god, the box. Okay. We have to get into that. Yeah, yeah. we have a lot There's to discuss over there. There's more than just there. the box. So oh. cliffhanger. They're never gonna talk to me again. They're like this girl. <laughs> All right, guys, head on over to our Patreon. We'll see you there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Just silence. Great.